Ladies and gentlemen, requesting everyone to kindly please be seated. We are about to begin requesting everyone to kindly please take your seats. Thank you. A very good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the conference on consumer-centric approaches for e-cooking transition, organized by the Bureau of Energy Efficiency in collaboration with CLASP. Ladies and gentlemen, on the occasion of the World Environment Day today, we are honored to have all of you here, along with all of us, to revolutionize the energy efficiency narrative. To start off this day, this conference, we have an esteemed lineup of speakers, who will be sharing their insights and expertise on clean cooking solutions and strategies. So without any delay, let's dive into our agenda. Our conference today is divided into three sessions, an inaugural session followed by two panel discussions. We'll also have a pledge on mission life, emphasizing our commitment to sustainable living. So let's get started. Ladies and gentlemen, as we begin the inaugural session, may I please begin by inviting our esteemed dignitaries to take their respective places at, uh, on the dais. Beginning by inviting Mr. Ajay Tiwari, Additional Secretary, Ministry of Power, to kindly please grace us with your presence on the dais. Or Zordar Taliyon ke saath Abhinandan. May I please request Mr. Abhay Bakri, DG BEE, to kindly please join us on the dais. Zordar Taliyon, Mr. Abhay Bakri ke liye. I also please request Mr. Melin Deore, Secretary BE, to kindly please join us on the dais. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause. And Mr. Bishal Thapa, Senior Director from Class also joining us on the dais. A big round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. Din ki shuruat hai and we are so low on energy. What's happening? Can we have a louder applause, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's time we begin with the welcome address, and this will be delivered by Mr. Bishal Thapa, Senior Director of CLASP. Bishal brings 22 years of global experience working with a wide range of public and private sector partners across energy, climate, energy efficiency, environment, and sustainability. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Mr. Bishal for the welcome address. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Ajay Tiwari, Additional Secretary, Ministry of Power. Mr. Abe Bakre, DG, Bureau of Energy Efficiency. Mr. Milin Diore, Secretary, Bureau of Energy Efficiency. Ladies and gentlemen, a very warm and good morning to you all. Welcome to the conference on consumer-centric approaches for e-cooking transition. Today is World Environment Day, but it's not just any other World Environment Day. Today is also the 50th anniversary of World Environment Day. In 1972, the United Nations Conference on Human Environment in Stockholm decided to recognize June 5th as World Environment Day. That was the first ever UN Conference on Environment. India played a seminal role at that conference, both in shaping the agenda and in formulating the discourse. That conference would go on to formulate the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change and the Kyoto Protocol, among other things. But as we gather today here for the 50th anniversary of the World Environment Day, it's also important to recognize that all of us bear the burden of the world's activities on climate and our own impact on the environment over the last half century. The space for experiments 
and pilots, ladies and gentlemen, has shrunk. This is the moment. It is now or never. It is time for decisive and transformative action. And the transition to e-cooking, in some sense, represents that opportunity. A few years ago, at the 26th UN Climate Change Conference in Glasgow, the Honorable Prime Minister articulated a very bold vision of lifestyle for environment, where, we, where he called from people all over the world to engage in mindful and deliberate utilization of resources instead of mindless and destructive consumption. His bold vision, along with the activities that India has undertaken over the last few years, paves a pathway for integrating our environmental consciousness into a greater climate movement. In line with that vision and the activities that India has taken, the transition to e-cooking represents the innovation in technology combined with our environmental consciousness as well. It will enable the shift to a cleaner, greener, and more environmentally benign lifestyle or behavior, in this case, around e-cooking. India is poised for a radical and transformation revolution on e-cooking. Millions, uh, millions of Indians still rely on biomass and other traditional fuels as their primary source for cooking. Indoor air pollution from such types of cooking is one of the largest causes of death and a significant health hazard. Not to mention the discomfort that such cooking provides to these households and the cost that it brings. The potential for e-cooking but isn't just limited to rural areas and where biomass or traditional fuels is being used. It is also highly relevant for urban areas, for households uh, in urban areas, and for commercial kitchens in urban areas. Our own study from Europe suggests that the transition to e-cooking from natural-based cooking can also help improve indoor air quality quite significantly by, by removing carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, nitrogen dioxide, and other indoor air pollutants. India's import dependence on natural gas is increasing and is one area where e-cooking can also help. The transition to e-cooking could shift millions of Indians to cleaner, safer, and affordable cooking. It can help reduce the energy imports and also reduce our supply vulnerabilities. It could contribute significantly to reductions in indoor air quality and enhance the experience in the kitchen. Overall, the transition to e-cooking can increase the quality of life, can improve the quality of life, reduce CO2 emissions, and improve indoor air quality. The prerequisites for the transition on e-cooking are all in place. Igniting the transition to electric cooking now requires a greater emphasis on consumer awareness. BEE, for example, has now included induction hubs within the SNL program. This will not only provide consumers greater confidence and information about their products, but give them the ability to choose across the wide variety of products that are available. It will encourage additional product suppliers, which may also help to broaden the range of different types of available products, for instance, by trying to include or encourage the availability of multi-hubs induction cookstoves. New partnerships between stakeholders with a focus on customer-centric approaches is now essential to drive this energy transition. This is a great theme, and I'm glad you are here all with us. I'm very delighted that Mr. Ajay Tiwari, the additional secretary at the Ministry Power, is here. Thank you, sir. It's also a great honor for us to have Mr. Ajay Bakre, the DG of Bureau of Energy Efficiency. Thank you for joining us this morning, sir. Mr. Milan Diore, the Secretary of BEE, will be delivering the vote of thanks, and we acknowledge and appreciate his presence here. In addition to that, as was illustrated a little while ago, or mentioned a little while ago, we have two interesting sessions uh, with participants from a wide variety of different agencies 
and entities. I'm pleased to have with us Ms. Pravati Nalini Samal, the director at BEE, who will be giving a presentation on the initiatives undertaken to promote e-cooking. Welcome, ma'am. Also pleased to have with us Dr. Umesh Srivastava, the Indian uh, representative from the Indian Oil Corporation Limited, Mr. Florian Postel from GIZ, Mr. Anil Mehta from SEMA, Ms. Shruti Diora from IntelliCap. Uh, along with that, we are also very delighted to welcome Mr. Animesh Mishra from EESL, Mr. P.K. Mukherjee from CLASP, Mr. Anjala Horo from Dharma Life, Mr. Anil Desai from Flame O'Neill Technologies, Mr. Samrat Desgupta from EKI, Mr. Sunil Mani from EEW, and we'll also be uh, delighted to have a presentation from Mr. Abhishek Gupta, who's the GM at EESL. The two sessions will be moderated by my colleagues, Ms. Neha and Mr. Prasun Pandey. Welcome once again. Thank you all for joining. Thank you very much, Mr. Thapa, for setting the tone for uh, the meeting today. Your insights are truly valuable. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with us. Ladies and gentlemen, we're moving on, and uh, now we have the keynote address, and this will be delivered by Mr. Abhay Bakri, the Director General of Bureau of Energy Efficiency. So, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Bakri is the DG, as we all know. He's a postgraduate in electrical engineering from IIT and belongs to the 1988 batch of Indian Railways Electrical Engineering Services. Let's welcome Mr. Bakri for the keynote address. So, Dartalia. Thank you, madam. Sri Ajay Tiwari Ji, Regional Secretary, Ministry of Power, Government of India. Mr. Vishal Thapa, Senior Director, Class, and uh, all his colleagues, the class team. Mr. Milin Devre, Secretary B. Other senior officers from BWE. Colleagues, experts, who have come, just now Mr. Vishal has uh, listed all of them, oil marketing company, think tanks, media personals, manufacturers, experts, ladies and gentlemen. It's indeed a pleasure that uh, on this uh, wonderful occasion of World Environment Day, we have come together in the morning, Monday morning, and then we are talking on a very, very important subject. In fact, the World Environment goes, uh, Day goes very, very uh, many years back, when the first time when I participated in one of the essay competition in the World, World Environment Day, that time very few people knew 5th June is the World, uh, World Environment Day. And, uh, of course, I got the first prize in the state, but that's a different issue. But that time I realized why this 5th June is actually important for, for all of us, for the citizens, for the population of this world and this planet. Because now we have been talking for the past at least 20 years plus after the Rio summit, etc., UN convention, and then all this Paris agreement, Glasgow Pact, everything. And today we have come to a very, very important juncture where now we are moving ahead with a very clear mission called life. And we are really thankful to CLASP and all other participants here that we are actually taking forward this life as part of our own effort, our own one step ahead in moving in this mission. So let me thank all of you for joining for this wonderful uh, event and also this life movement. Now, if we talk about this electric cooking, most of the times I have thought this is one intervention. We don't have to do not money. Uh, we don't have to do much research here. We know what is electric cooking. There is hardly any science or thing because we have been using it. The appliances which work on electric cooking are already there. They are there in this country. They are they are in the world. It is also not very difficult to even replicate them. Because even the consumers, most of them, they know, or even if they don't know, they can immediately know. It's not. So this is 
one intervention very where very little uh, further research or something is required and when we started this work on electric cooking maybe something around 2018 or 19 we came to the only only barrier was perhaps the confidence in consumer about two things that whether the appliances which are available will really work or if there is something goes wrong whether can be re uh, replaced or can be repaired or not that was one thing and of course the other thing which is again a kind of apprehension is that whether are we in a position to cook most of the dishes which uh, which we do in a normal cooking or a normal cuisine whether they can be also cooked on electrics uh, electric appliances so these were the two very little uh, you can say barriers or challenge challenges which uh, we need to address and i think most of they have been already addressed and even if we go along uh, we can further improve upon that so there are utensils available now which can very well cook most of the dishes what we know there are appliances which are quite reliable as i mentioned this is not a very big uh, uh, a big equipment where there are so much of uh, science available so many parts etc of course there was some issue whether uh, how how much can be manufactured within india how much can be uh, we need to import and maybe how can we actually scale up our production so that we can increase the indigenous portion so that's the challenge but that can always happen in every intervention but if i see that uh, when we launched go electric campaign and and most of you are part of that we had big challenge in terms of e mobility e mobility having a complete infrastructure for ev charging even though ev charging can be done at home but yes the ev charging infrastructure itself was a kind of a uh, barrier which most of the consumers always perceive as it is a barrier so they they are refrain from purchasing a ev the other thing is the cost of ev obviously that was also one major reason and most important whether the production itself of those e mobility or e cars uh, was a limited one and uh, uh, there was lot of science there was lot of improvements software battery issues in even the fires etc but fortunately all these impediments were not there in go electric campaigns the second part and which is very important part which we are today uh, deliberating here is the e cooking that's much more simpler so the, perhaps the only thing uh, which we need to start is the replication we discussed with uh, most of the institutional uh, buyers the areas where we can actually uh, replicate them or scale up them so i tried to focus on those areas those canteens those cooking facilities where the cooking happens in a for a slightly longer time it is not only something like one hour at our house uh, household in the morning maybe half an hour in the lunch time and maybe another one hour in the evening so going going from something around 2 to 2 uh, to 3 hours of daily cooking those kitchens or those uh, uh, locations where the cooking can happen to 6 hours 8 hours or 10 hours can we actually replace uh, replace or in fact i have even given directions don't call it as a replacement try to substitute 50% if there are 20 burners put aside the 10 bur burners and substitute by 10 burners or 10 hot plates or 10 induction hobs so that the consumers can have choice if he feels there is some issue if if he feels his dish cannot be cooked on electric cooking he can immediately try for the remaining 50 percent burner and there we can always estimate whether the consumer is ha happy or not is there any benefit for him in terms of safety in terms of environment as mr vishal very lightly said uh, the clean environment the ambience there the safety issue because uh, and of course uh, the the time the uh, the and the electricity cost so all these things should happen in those areas where we can have almost round the clock 
cooking or at least if at least if not round the clock at least 10 to 12 hours of cooking so those are our immediate priorities where we can substitute 50% without replacing it we can just substitute and find out what is the consumer confidence there so this is one step which all of you can perhaps uh, help class and b w e and all other uh, entities who can actually replicate them the second thing which is a larger kind of a proposition where and uh, touched by mr vishal thop also if we talk about sdg 7 the sdg 7 talks uh, the 7.1 talks about the modern uh, energy for all that is universal access we still have about 700 million people so 70 crore people in the world who do not have even the basic access to the energy second thing is the uh, access to clean cooking for the as per sdg 7 <coughs> so there there are more than now 2.1 billion people who don't have the access to the clean cooking and they are unfortunately exposed to harmful ways of cooking which is again a threat to their life and of course there are more so many other issues so if we talk as a globally the sdg the the promotion to clean cooking or in that regard the promotion to electric cooking is also a kind of a natural way of moving ahead with the sdgs and sdgs as we all know have to be achieved by 70, 2030 that's the global pledge and we need to contribute that now in india when we have at least completed the first step that is the universal access to all the households uh, through electricity and that's first part we have already achieved the second part the major things were done by oil marketing oil marketing company and they are all there as per the government's ujwala program and we have also had access for lpg in most of the uh, households in the country but when we move one step ahead and promote the electric cooking i am sure we are going to a much cleaner environment much safer environment a kind of a hassle free because the energy comes to you through electricity through your grid through your uh, uh, sources which in any case you are using for lighting you are using for mobile charging you are also using for fans and very soon we would see that even the households will have tvs refrigerator etc so when you can always use this is one important when you can always use so many other gadgets through electricity which is now available at your home so why not electric cooking lpg we use only one purpose that's cooking lpg is a clean cooking and we are using it for uh, as a uh, burner or through cooking lpg we don't use for so many other things of course in some houses we use lpg for electric heating uh, the water heating that also should be actually slowly shifted to the electric heating or the geysers but in electricity we are using it day night there are so many appliances of electricity so why can't we add another one that's electric cooking so it's as simple as that so in that way if we really see the electric cooking is actually a future but in that case we have to move ahead and here the consumer participation is very very important and that's why on today's world environment day we should promote this culture of electric cooking it will take step by step process as i mentioned we may call it as substitution even many uh, many experts uh, recommended me that only promote electric cooking for reheating purpose because most of the urbanized households they do reheating a lot so they cook at one time and they eat at some other time and they do reheating even in the reheating itself there could be a 15 20% extra energy use which can be minimized or optimized through electric cooking so even if simple perhaps most of us use microwave so this could be a better option of uh, reheating so finally i can say that on this world environment day the life movement can actually promote if we if we talk about this electric cooking as one of the part of go electric campaign and we should use electric cooking in the most possible and the best possible manner and in this regard i think we need to start from the urban households slowly we can move it to 
uh, semi-urban and then smaller township, tier 3, tier 4, and finally to the rural household. I'm sure today's deliberation will actually find solutions, how to really move it ahead, and this will go a long way. As I mentioned, it could be a longer process, three to five years, but by 2030, I believe the electric cooking will be one of the <coughs> best so solution for the country like India, because we are going to switch our grid from today's 24% to something around 44% of electricity from non-fossil fuel. And in that regard, use of electricity for cooking is going to be a win-win situation, not only from the power sector perspective, but also from the consumer pr uh, perspective. Thank you for inviting me here, and thank you for joining. Thank you. Jai. Thank you, Mr. Rightly said, so many appliances and activities running on electricity, then why not cooking? Taking on these learnings forward and building on the work that has already been done will only be the way forward. So thank you very much, sir, for sharing your valuable thoughts on the importance of clean cooking solutions in India's energy transition journey. Thank you very much. Now I would like to request Mr. Ajay Tiwari, the additional secretary of the Ministry of Power for the special address. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tiwari is an Indian Administrative Services Officer of the 1993 batch. He is presently additional secretary Ministry of Power looking after energy conservation, energy transition, international cooperation, training and research and perspective planning for Ministry of Power. Ek bar zordar taliyon ke saath abhinandan. Thank you, madam. Good morning <coughs> to everyone. Sri Abhay Bakre Ji, Director General of Bureau of Energy Efficiency. Sri Bishal Thapa Ji, Senior Director of CLASP. Sri Milind Deore, Secretary of BE. My colleagues from Indian Oil Corporation Limited, Consumer Electronics and Appliances Manufacturing Association, GIZ, Energy Efficiency Services Limited, Civil Societies, residential, resi residential Welfare Associations, Consumer Groups, Manufacturers, Industry Representatives, Ladies and Gentlemen. I really feel privileged to be here on World Environment Day and a beautiful pledge that we have taken. I think ever, I never uh, saw such kind of pledge in my life, but today on World Environment Day, this has created a good vibe among ourselves that we have pledged to acquire environment friendly habits. And I think on this day, e cooking is also going to be an environmental friendly habit for all Indians in the days to come. When we see e-cooking as a small intervention or a kind of, some, some people take it very lightly, but let me tell you, this has many, many dimensions to the families of India, from urban areas to rural areas, semi-rural areas, and our population being the biggest in the world, it makes the biggest impact on the world environment. We have been leader in the world environment. Whenever I go outside the country and attend various global platforms, we see that there is a talk of life, which is promoted by our Honorable Prime Minister Modi ji, lifestyle for environment. Nobody in the Western world knew that the changes in lifestyle can make a big change in the environment. We have been talking about energy transition in the context of climate change, that the temperature has risen, there has been a global warming, there has been the temperature rise, which is going to be 2 degrees centigrade by the end of the of end of the century. So we have been talking about energy transition all over the world and India 
let me tell you, has emerged as the leader in energy transition. Honorable Prime Minister in Glasgow, he announced the ambitions of the country in the form of big ambitions that we will add renewable energy to 500 gigawatt the, from the non-fossil sources plus renewable energy to the 500 gigawatt by 2030 and having our renewable energy more than 50 percent of total installed capacity. So with this announcement, we are moving towards renewable energy. We are working day and night, and in fact, we are going to cross the targets much earlier than what was actually announced. This is clear from our NDCs, which we achieved nine years ahead in terms of the emission intensity, the carbon intensity, which had to be reduced by 35%, and it was reduced in 2021 itself, Similarly, achieving our RE targets. Coming back to India's position in energy transition, not only in terms of supply of energy, but also in terms of universal access. India is the country which in 18 months, just 18 months period, under Sobhagya scheme, gave connections to every household who were actually left out, and the number was astounding 26 million households. Never before in the history of the world, so many houses were given connections from the grid and some off-grid also. Within 18 months, we achieved universal access, and this remains like example in front of the world. As my colleague told you, 700 million people in the world, they still do not have access to energy, the, the electricity. Most of them in the African countries. In G20, this is one of the priorities of our country to take universal electricity access or energy access to all the households of the world not only in G20 countries, but also providing energy access to the entire world, to all the households. On Indian example, once we have this electricity connection to all the households, I think electric cooking is going to be the future of Indian kitchen. By 2030, I think we can have a target as to how many households we starting from the urban areas, then moving to semi-rural areas, and then further down to the rural areas. We can promote electric cooking because the technology is available, it has to be scaled up, and a model has to be developed in such a manner so that the electricity which is used, it comes from our resources, so that there is an aggregation of carbon credits also. There is an aggregation model for, uh, for selling the consumer appliances or electric chulas to, to the households. But it has to work in such a manner, the whole business model has to work in such a manner that it becomes affordable to our population right from urban to rural areas. Of course, it will penetrate, it will take a few years. But it is the right time with the rising income of the urban households in the country and a big middle class which has come up. We all want to move towards electric cooking. Why? Because now we have 24 by 7 electricity in our houses. Let me tell you, 24 by 7, when we say in urban areas, you will be surprised to know that we are su supplying electricity for 23.5 hours every day on an average. Half an hour is only for some local disruptions or something, you can say. In all the urban areas, it is 23.5 hours that we are supplying. 
This is itself is an achievement in itself. In the rural areas, also it is 23 hours, 23.5 hours in some rural areas that electricity is being supplied. Those days are gone when there were power cuts. Those days are gone when there were 4 hours, 6 hours or even 10 hours of power cut in the urban areas. We have surpassed those milestones. And this is a big achievement. I think we should all be proud of it. I'll give you a small example. When I was going to Sydney with a minister, power minister, there was one old lady sitting by my side, 75 plus. She had left India long back 40 years and she had become Australian citizen. She keeps coming to Lucknow, she told me. And she said, now I want to live in my old village. I said, why? What has happened? She said, now I can put my AC on, 24 hour. I can have fridge. I can have 53 centimeter TV, 53 inches TV. And everything is running well. I am getting 24 hour supply in my village. I can get water supply because there is an uh, electricity supply. And then of course Wi-Fi now it is. So I said then you should thank the power minister who is sitting on 1A. Please go to him and say your namaste to the power minister who has made it possible for you to come back to our country. So this is how the things are changing very fast. If you go to your own village, you will find people using fridge like we normally do in the urban areas. So that is how electric cooking is also going to pick up if you have a very good business and aggregation model. So all the manufacturers here, I would like to tell them, please don't be disheartened, push your product. We are ready for it. Now on the other side, let me tell you from the ministry side, electric cooking is going to be our focus after success of Ujjwala. Ujjwala, if you see from one point of view, from the health point of view of our rural women, households, then we can also see the clean cooking. We can also see from the other side that is still we depend on gas. We do not have enough gas reserves in the country, as you know, which may be just good enough for urban gas supply for cooking. But it may not be sufficient for other uses. So we need to preserve gas and switch over to electricity. And of course, on the, so on the supply side, those sources of electricity have to be converted to RE, renewable energy, solar, wind, and hydro, and other forms of renewable energy. Now from Ujjwala, one success where 7 crore households, kitchens had been converted to clean cooking. Now let us move from clean cooking to e-cooking, even in rural areas, that is what the ministry is planning. For which we are developing some models where affordability is the biggest question. Once there is a e chula or e kitchen in the electric kitchen in the rural areas, where from the electricity comes? Of course, it will come from the grid or it may be coming from the of grid solar. So solar cooking or e cooking or solar thermal cooking. These are the models which have to be promoted, especially for the rural areas where it may not be possible for the poorer households to afford electricity bill coming out of the electric kitchen. So there is a lot of discussion in the ministry and we are coming out with some aggregation model for which our energy efficiency services limited who are good in aggregation model, whether it was LED Ujala scheme or whether it is now national electric bus program which is coming up, by aggregation they have brought down the prices of the appliances. You must be remembering that LED bulbs which were 300, 400 rupees at once upon a time now we just buy for less than 100 rupees. 
Similarly, for electric bus program, they have brought down the cost and the price of electric bus model by one third. So this is how we are moving towards a kind of Indian model of electric cooking, which will serve Indian kitchens. Our requirements are different. I remember earlier when uh, microwave ovens came, these were all Western microwave oven. But nowadays our women are using and we are also using microwave oven to cook Indian dishes, which are very much Indian. So we are known for it. We know how to adapt things to our own requirements. So the Indians are different. India is rising on the scale. And we are also bothered about the, the countries where still 700 million people do not have any access to the energy. I'll be very happy if it picks up in India as soon as possible. Within two or three years, it should cover all the urban areas. If we have standard models which are affordable, which consume less electricity, because more electricity if they consume, I will have to produce as an electric man, I have to produce more electricity. Last year, India's electricity consumption rose by 10.4%, between 10 and 11 percent, which has never happened in any other country, maybe sometime in China. But we are rising at that pace. Consumption of electricity, when it is rising, that also shows the corresponding growth in the country. And we have a growth trajectory which is very promising for the next few years, at least 20, till 2030 if we see. And by 2030, we would like to cover as many households in the country by electric cooking. So that is going to add to the environment and the temperature rise that we talk about. The source and, and the consumption both have to be tackled simultaneously. That is how I see it. Exact, and, and more uh, importantly, we also have a lot of support from our advocacy uh, groups. From Power Foundation of India, last year we ran a Lifestyle for Environment campaign where we also took to electric cooking. We were given the part of Agni, one of the Panch Tattva of life. Electricity, power means Agni. So we took this Agni Tattva and we had a lot of awareness meetings through our Power Foundation of India all over the country and where we had invited such groups like here, the industries, the think tanks, the academia, the researchers, the professionals and the government. Everybody had conversed together and we, and we developed several models as to how we go about lifestyle for environment. Electric cooking is going to be part of it and part of the climate change tackle policy. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, sir, for your valuable insights. Thank you very much for sharing your views, thoughts, and ideas with all of us. Your perspectives are truly enlightening. Ladies and gentlemen, we really hope and pray that uh, the discussions which will follow today and those have, uh, which have happened be beneficial to the entire humanity and we move towards a cleaner and greener future. As we move towards concluding the inaugural session, may I please invite Mr. Milind Deore, Secretary, Bureau of Energy Efficiency, to kindly please deliver the vote of thanks. Mr. Deore, join Bureau of Energy Efficiency as Secretary in April 2023, and prior to this, he was working as Director in BEE, leading a team for the implementation of Energy Conservation Act, policies and schemes of Government of India into industries and commercial sectors. Welcoming Mr. Milind Deore. Very good morning, Suprabhat, respected dignitaries on the dais, esteemed guests, and dear participants, ladies and gentlemen. 
it is an immense pleasure for me to propose a vote of thanks for this today's conference on switch to electrical cooking which is organized on the uh, occasion of world environment day on behalf of b i stand here to express our heartfelt gratitude and uh, warm vote of thanks to all all of you for gracing this event first and for, foremost i we extend our sincere thanks to our additional chief secretary sri ajay tiwari ji who is also in charge for energy conservation activities in uh, ministry of power sir we thank you for sparing your valuable time and sharing your very insightful thoughts and clearly highlighting the need of e cooking and also sensitizing in the current context of various facts i am really thank you sir and under your guidance we will definitely take this as also one of the important scheme and program which will be implement sir your continuous support is there for energy efficiency and energy conservation and we are al always doing a good sir i also thank our director general sri habay bhakre sir who has uh, initiated this thought for organizing this conference on this occasion of world environment day at b we are mandated for energy conservation energy efficiency energy saving but actually our source of energy to do this is our dg so i really thank him for his continuous support and guidance to b staff and uh, leading the b at very high level thank you sir i also thank uh, the officials from discoms uh, sdas and also from manufacturers esl sema intellectual intellicaf iocl and various experts for joining this event at very short notice i also special thanks to our partner claps and mr bishal senior director of claps for organizing this event on behalf of b we would also like to extend our thank to all the media people who have joined here and going to uh, spread this message about e cooking and the the actions about life difference life which is the mission announced any by our honorable pm which is based on p3 model that is pro planet people and it is premised on the basis of principle of lifestyle of the planet for the planet and by the planet the main basic fundamental is that instead of mindless and destructive consumption we should go for mindful and deliberate consumption or utilization so you all are aware about it the e cooking lot of facts we under uh, learn from the previous uh, speakers i don't want to be talk here because we have a very fantastic two sessions are there where we are going to learn about the necessity challenges and issues of e cooking but in short i just want to share here in our historical culture also in our sanskrit vedas some of the shlokas are there about the clean cooking not e cooking but the clean cooking i just read this lines pak karoti rasam swadu anandam deti jivanaya shuddham cha prakruti saurakshat saurakshat atma cha samarpayat the meaning of this shlokas i just stayed find it out from the internet itself i don't have much knowledge but the meaning is that cooking creates delightful flavors bringing joy to our lives preserve purity in the nature and offers yourself in a humble service the important thing is that whatever action when we do the cooking it should preserve our purity in the nature and i hope this e cooking which is our the main actions under the life mission will definitely 
preserves our environment and also gives us a healthy habits so once again i extend we extend our sincere thanks to everyone for involved in making this event a remarkable success together let us continue working towards greener cleaner and more sustainable future thank you all and we remain committed to the cause of our environment thank you so much preserving environment and bringing purity in cooking for a cleaner and sustainable future thank you very much sir for proposing the vote of thanks ladies and gentlemen uh, before finally concluding this inaugural session may i please request mr bishal thapa to kindly please hand over tokens of respect and appreciation for each of our dignitaries on the dais may I please uh, request the team to kindly please bring in the tokens of appreciation requesting mr bishal to kindly please present a token to mr ajay tiwari first ladies and gentlemen we thank each of our dignitaries today for giving us their time and sharing their insights views thoughts and ideas with all of us today thank you mr abhay bakre for joining us here today mr abhay bakre जोरदार तालियां एक बार फिर से सभी की ओर से एंड मिस्टर मिलिंद देओरे थैंक यू वेरी मच सर फॉर बीइंग हियर टुडे लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन वंस अगेन जोरदार तालियां सभी की ओर से एंड वी हैव अ ग्रुप पिक्चर नाउ एज अ टोकन एज एज अ यू नो मेमोरी ऑफ दिस डे टुडे सो दैट व्हेनेवर वी लुक एट दिस पिक्चर वी आर रिमाइंडेड ऑफ दिस डे लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन एज पर द एजेंडा वी हैव अ वेरी क्विक ब्रेक अबाउट 10 मिनट्स और उसके बाद हम वापस आएंगे अपने सेशंस को शुरू करेंगे जहां पर प्रेजेंटेशंस हैं पैनल डिस्कशंस हैं तो उसके लिए एक छोटा सा ब्रेक जिसके बाद वील री असेंबल एंड मैं प्लीज रिक्वेस्ट एवरीवन टू काइंडली प्लीज बी बैक इन 10 मिनट टाइम थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू वेरी मच लेडीज एंड जेंटमैन विद दिस वी कंक्लूड द इनॉग्रल सेशन एंड वी रिक्वेस्ट एवरी वन टू काइंडली प्लीज प्रोसीड टूवर्ड्स द टी एंड कॉफी ब्रेक दैट वी हैव एंड काइंडली प्लीज बी बैक इन टेन मिनट्स थैंक यू वेरी मच आप प्लीज सब लोग आ जाएं क्योंकि अपने अगले सेशन की हम शुरुआत करने जा रहे हैं सो सम टेक्निकल प्रेजेंटेशन एंड सम वेरी वेरी इन्फॉर्मेटिव डिस्कशन एंड लाइटनिंग डिस्कशन आर अबाउट टू हैपन मे आई प्लीज रिक्वेस्ट एवरी वन टू काइंडली प्लीज बी सीटेड एज क्विकली एज पॉसिबल Ladies and gentlemen, we are about to begin. May I please request everyone to kindly please take your seats, especially the ones on the left hand side. सबसे निवेदन है कि please आप सब लोग बैठ जाएं. हमारे technical presentations की हम शुरुआत करने जा रहे हैं.
So before we actually begin with the technical presentation, I would like to uh, apprise everyone of the fact that the tea that all of us just enjoyed was made on the induction stove. <laughs> all of us, I think, have noticed that was made on the induction stove. And uh, this demonstration highlights the convenience of this technology and the potential of e-cooking in our everyday lives. So we enjoyed our, you know, beverage on, from the induction stove, and I think we'll have some food also coming up from the induction stove. Ladies and gentlemen, we're beginning with our session now. May I please request and invite on the dais Ms. Pravata Nalini Samal, the Director of the Bureau of Energy Efficiency. She will be discussing the initiatives undertaken to promote e-cooking. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together as we welcome Ms. Samal. She has 16 years of experience, 16 years of experience in energy management and policies in various sectors of the Indian economy. Currently, she is leading the standards and labeling program of BEE. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you, Juhi. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning to all of you. Uh, so today it's uh, uh, World Environment Day. That's why you all, we all have gathered here to actually celebrate the uh, World Environment Day. But if, uh, in my view, every day is a World Environment Day because without a good environment, the life, uh, you cannot actually imagine the life without a good environment. So now if we see uh, so much problems like the uh, pollution level is increasing and every day, everywhere we are uh, discussing about the global warming. So that's why uh, every day we should celebrate uh, the World Environment Day and we should uh, initiate little, little of things that, uh, uh, that can uh, make the environment better. So it's a privilege to be here and it's an honor as a woman actually it's an honor for me to today uh, to discuss about clean cooking uh, with you. Uh, from the morning session during inaugural uh, event we, uh, we, are being, uh, we have been hearing about what is the uh, requirement and need of e-cooking in today's environment, why we are talking about e-cooking and uh, why uh, we should go beyond the LPG and uh, all those options and we should opt for e-cooking. As uh, already mentioned that uh, uh, Ministry of Power has launched Go Electric campaign to uh, promote e-cooking and electric vehicle or uh, electric mobility in this uh, endeavor. And as we can see that uh, uh, as, per, uh, as, uh, as per the Niti Aayog's uh, estimate, there is a potential of about 600 terawatt hour by 2047 in the uh, cooking segment. So uh, if we uh, shift from LPG to e-cooking and all we can adopt the e-cooking option, there is a potential about 600 terawatt hour we can save. <clears throat> and under Sobhagya scheme, uh, scheme, as uh, additional secretary mentioned in the morning session, that uh, uh, every Every, uh, our focus is that every household should be electrified and that would actually help for us to go for electric cooking and we can, uh, um, we can see the penetration of electric cooking in the rural segment as well. And this is also linked with Mission Life as already mentioned uh, by all the dignitaries during the morning session that this is linked with Mission Life that we all should, be, uh, we all should move towards pro-planet people so that we can adopt the all kind of options that, is, that will actually help uh, our environment. So these are various electric cooking options available uh, uh, in our country and as a woman, uh, 
uh, apart from a professional, energy professional and a BE official, I'm also a housemaker. And as a housemaker, I can uh, assure you that electric cooking is one of the best options we can see in today's cooking. Earlier, if you remember, uh, in the earlier uh, life, like uh, in our childhood, we, my, my grandmother used to cook in uh, chula, like wood, wood chula. Ka, ka, uh, ha, yeah, that one. And uh, she actually doesn't like when my mother uh, used, uh, used to cook in uh, LPG stove. So there was a difference between uh, opinion that uh, I will not eat because that food is not tasty. So that, that actually that problem now we are going to face when we are actually pursuing the people to go from LPG to electric cooking. Because uh, as far as our culture is concerned and as far as our foods, variety of foods are concerned, it's, it's very dif different from the European culture or from the uh, Western culture in any, any Western country if we talk about. Their kind of food cooking is not... Uh, uh, same as Indian cooking. So we, we want chapati, like it flame chapati. If it will not be full, we will not like it. We will not like it. So that kind of, uh, uh, some, kind, uh, some barriers are there. That we have to actually, uh, we have to see how to overcome these barriers so that this e-cooking option can penetrate in the rural segment as well. And if we talk about all these options, microwave oven is already popular. I think whoever sitting in this hall, 95% uh, or 99% people are, must be using microwave in their home. And it's not a actually good option for cooking. It's a good option for heating. Because in my home also, I don't cook in microwave. I also reheat. I use for reheating. So for cooking option, this induction stove is a very good option and this is the next, uh, uh, I can say the uh, uh, best option for energy transition from LPG to electric cooking. So these are the option and uh, now we are actually uh, 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 targeting this induction stove in uh, e-cooking segment. So this is a comparison between induction and LPG stove. If we talk about LPG stove, what are the benefits of induction stove if we compare uh, with LPG stove? So the most what as a woman I feel that what is the uh, best benefit we can get out of this induction, it, it is very, very safe as compared to the LPG stove. Every day, every other day, if you uh, read the newspaper, you can see the accident because of LPG burst and some kinds of lives are taken, all those kinds of uh, uh, news we see in the newspaper. And it's very, you know, very uh, heart-touching kind of thing that uh, uh, these uh, accidents are be uh, happened because of LPG stoves. So, uh, uh, when we talk about induction uh, benefits, that uh, uh, it's very safe as well as it's very energy efficient. As you can see, it's 13% uh, more energy efficient than LPG stove. At the same time, there are some barriers that we'll discuss in the uh, uh, other slides. So these are the benefits if we uh, collate together that it is energy efficient, it is clean, portable, you can easily carry wherever you go, less pollutants and easy to clean also comfort. As you, uh, because the woman is actually uh, uh, in 99% households, the woman actually cook. And we should think about their health and their working condition, uh, uh, their environment, so that their health, uh, we can have some kind of, you know, uh, health benefits to these women. And in uniform heating, yes, technically it's uniform heating, improved health, as I mentioned, and precise temperature control. Here, uh, yes, 
uh, as uh, some uh, some of the manufacturers will be are here so my appeal to all the manufacturers that already i'm using this induction hob at my home so we need to uh, work more on this precise temperature control because whenever uh, we actually compare with the lpg stove the temperature control little bit tricky in case of induction uh, stove so my appeal to all the manufacturers that uh, please work uh, on this uh, technicality so that more precious more uh, precise temperature control we should have and it would be actually helpful for the women to uh, cook all kind of food uh, they want now also we can cook all type of food but except those chapati some some people uh, they love uh, flamed chapati that should be you know phulna chahiye usko but if i remember that my mother used to cook in the chula when uh, so she used to you know uh, she, she was using some kind of clean cloth and to uh, make the chapati and this that chapati was also uh, you know is uh, equally tasty like uh, flame uh, chapati so uh, that we should uh, uh, some changes we should uh, we should actually do in our behavior that uh, we can adopt this kind of clean cooking so this you, if you see the cost of cooking if we compare with induction cook and lpg stove so the cost the annual expense is more in case of lpg stove and also the upfront cost is little bit more uh, in case of lpg stove but if we compare the cost it's nearly equal but other things like clean and safe cooking all those kind all all things are dominating in case of uh, induction hob if we see the market scenario what is the market scenario and is, is there really a potential to go for electric cooking then we can see that uh, the cagr is 10% now and if we talk about the uh, production so it's about 4 4 million it was in 2018 19 and it will be increasing 10% cagr annually so uh, what we uh, have initiated at bureau of energy efficiency that we have introduced the standards and labeling program for induction hub because whatever products uh, household products we always aim for energy efficient products should uh, reach to the common consumer and to the households so we have introduced the standards and labeling program we have introduced the uh, performance standard for the uh, induction hubs so that there should be, there should be a minimum energy efficiency for whatever product available in the market and you can see from the table that uh, there are various bands that one star to five star and one star is less efficient and five star is the most energy efficient uh, uh, induction hub and we have just introduced this uh, on 1st march 2023 uh, we anticipate that within 2 to 3 years the registration and the market penetration would be higher and there would be more participation from the manufacturer side so if you see the electricity saving potential by 2030 it's about 3802 million unit we can save if we implement this Uh, induction uh, hub uh, labeling program and uh, about 312 metric ton of carbon dioxide so as i talked about the barriers whenever we introduce a new uh, appliance a new technology there will be some barriers uh, to overcome to these barriers we have to actually uh, do a, a very uh, a big awareness program and uh, we have to reach out to the consumer and explain them what are the benefits of this e cooking in comparison to the lpg stove so switching cost actually it's little bit pinching to the common consumer because if one consumer is using lpg stove then he uh, she is using uh, the normal kind of cooker 
but when uh, she she has to uh, shift to the induction hub then she has to expense uh, you know um, do some kind of 2500 or 3000 for the uh, additional cost for the cookware so this is the additional cost pinch, uh, pinching to the consumer that he ha she has to go for new cookware then cultural preference as i mentioned that there is a barrier in uh, people's mind that we cannot cook all kinds of food so that barrier we have to move that yes we can cook all kinds of food and uh, for that uh, special kind of utensils are available in the market that we have to reach out to the consumer to make them aware then uh, power dependence of power supply so reliable power supply is the major actually you know important factor for this induction hub in the rural segment, LPG, people are using LPG and uh, the chula. But in uh, urban segment, we have reliable power. But what about the rural segment? As ASR mentioned in the morning, that uh, uh, reliable power is already available in the rural segment as well. So that actually can help the rural people to adopt this induction hub. Complex operation, I... I some, somehow agree because uh, as I always I, uh, I am also a user of induction hub. It's easy for me to operate, but for a uh, you know village woman, it's 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 something difficult for her to uh, to read and uh, to actually you know uh, uh, set the what is the kind of temperature she has to set for that kind of uh, cooking option so so all these kind of barriers that uh, we have to keep in mind uh, and the manufacturers uh, uh, my appeal is that please uh, look at these barriers and uh, come up with some kind of uh, feasible option so that uh, we can reach out to the common consumer and we can Make them aware that uh, induction hub is a feasible cooling, uh, cooking option and within two to three years uh, we, uh, uh, with the help of EESL uh, we can actually uh, will be able to penetrate this kind of uh, cooking option in, the, in, uh, in uh, all kind of segment like rural or, or uh, urban area. So thank you so much for attending this uh, workshop today and uh, uh, I wish all the participants to uh, be proactively you should participate in this discussion so that it would be helpful you as well as Bureau of Energy Efficiency, all the stakeholders like EESL to move this uh, forward and make it successful. Thank you so much. Ma'am, may I please request you to kindly stay back uh, for the panel discussion as well. Uh, thank you very much for that insightful presentation and thank you for shedding light on BEE's initiatives that are driving the adoption of energy efficient and clean e-cooking solutions. Ladies and gentlemen, now we'll have uh, detailed deliberations in the technical panel discussion which will follow. For that, may I please begin by inviting the panelists on the dais. This panel discussion is on the strategies to promote households' transition to e-cooking. This will focus on consumer-centric approaches and behaviors to bring about e-cooking transition. Uh, we already have uh, Madam Prabhat Nalini on the dais, and uh, now moving forward, may I please invite Dr. Omesh Srivastav from Indian Oil Corporation Limited to kindly join us on the dais. So, Dataliyon ke saath Abhinandan, ladies and gentlemen, welcoming Dr. Omesh Srivastav the Chief General Manager, Indian Oil Corporation Limited, welcoming Mr. Florian Postel from GIZ. Very warm welcome to you, Mr. Florian. I think we should have louder applause, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Mr. Anil Mehta from Siyama. A very warm welcome to you, sir. Put your hands together for Mr. Mehta. Ms. Shruti Devra, partner at IntelliCap. Let's welcome Ms. Shruti. And moderating this discussion, we have Ms. Neha Dhingra, Senior Manager from CLASP. Unke liye bhi bahut zor dar thalia. 
Thank you to all the panelists for joining us here. And uh, Neha, may I please request you to kindly please take over the proceedings of the deliberations from here. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. A very good morning to you all. Thank you so much for joining us today for this panel discussion on consumer-centric approaches uh, to enable cooking, e-cooking transition. Uh, so I'll put out a few facts and stats just to con contextualize the situation a little bit. Uh, we've uh, heard in the inaugural uh, session about the importance of e-cooking, but just to put it a, a little bit more into perspective, as per National Family Health Survey, about 40% uh, of Indians still rely on solid fuel for e-cooking, for cooking. Uh, the next uh, uh, number which is astounding for me is uh, about 40% of India's air pollution is contributed by biomass-based cooking. And it not only leads to reduced life expectancy, it also is a big burden on health infrastructure that we have. Uh, in addition, it is also an issue of gender equality and inclusivity because women and children are disproportionately affected. We see e-cooking as a great initiative to kind of enable this transition and address some of the social, environmental, as well as economic issues associated with traditional modes of cooking. Uh, as per a recent uh, household survey conducted by a think tank, CEW, about 5% uh, households in India use e-cooking. and. Uh, with the initiatives that B has as well as ESL has, we hope to increase that number uh, to about 100% in the years to come. But uh, before we do that, we need to understand what are, the con what are the challenges that we face, what are the reflections and learnings from the consumer perspective before we have that transition. And that's what we are going to focus in the panel discussion today. Uh, thank you so much uh, to the esteemed panelists for do uh, joining the discussion. We have between us a uh, government representative, representative from IOCL, industry, bilateral organization, as well as social impact organization. Uh, I, I would like to request them to please take a minute to introduce themselves. Uh, Hi, I'm Anil Mehta. I'm representing the Consumer Electronics and Appliance Manufacturers Association. Uh, good morning. My name is Dr. Umesh Srivastava. I am uh, Executive Director, Indian Oil Research Center, uh, Faridabad, and uh, working in the alternative and renewable energy areas, including e-cooking. Thank you. Good morning once again. My name is Prabhat Nalini Samal, uh, representing Bureau of Energy Efficiency, and I am looking after standards and labeling program in BE. Uh, good morning from my side as well. Uh, my name is Florian Postel. I work for GIZ, uh, German Development Corporation, so we directly support the Indian government and I work for our energy program here for GIZ India. Hi everyone, uh, good afternoon. I'm Shruti Devra. I'm a partner with IntelliCap Avishkar Group. Um, I'm looking at the intersection of climate and gender and we work across advisory implementation and building solutions with entrepreneurs for scale. Thank you. I think you can ask for one more mic. Yeah. On the table, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, my first question is to Florian. Uh, GIZ has conducted some of the very interesting pilots on e-cooking. So I'd like to understand from you, like, what are the consumer preferences and behaviors that you've understood from the pilots that you've conducted, uh, which can enable this e-cooking transition at an accelerated pace? Um, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, just some background. So, uh, we did an overall assessment of electric cooking in, in India. Uh, so, we did three different assessments. One was a market assessment, one was a grid assessment, and the third one was the pilot then. Um, there we partnered with uh, Dharma Life for the implementation uh, on the ground, and um, we tested 300 devices. Those were provided by uh, Prestige. 200 induction cooktops and 100 uh, rice cookers, and we tested them ac across uh, four different um, states in, in India. So I think when it comes to the uh, consumers and what we figured out, so we've done a period of three months of testing, including uh, three surveys, and the households are requested to fill in a daily logbook on the usage of, of devices. So with all of that data um, that we had then analyzed over, over this period, um, we um, yeah, then looked at the user preferences. Um, I think there are several things that, that we could see. Um, one 
basic thing that we could see is the grid infrastructure. Uh, in several households, uh, power cuts were reported, and um, this is independent of the devices itself, but it automatically influences the um, user experience uh, to the devices itself. So without electricity, uh, the devices don't function. And I think we heard earlier that there has been significant progress in India over uh, the last decade when it comes to access to electricity. Um, but we can still see, especially maybe in the more rural parts, that uh, for a certain time of the day you don't have electricity. And even if this maybe just for one or two hours, is that, that is uh, during your cooking hours, this has a significant impact uh, on the user experience. So I think um, if we look at electric cooking, uh, the grid infrastructure becomes a very important aspect of that and uh, without grid infrastructure, no electric cooking. Um, so I think this is, this is one aspect. If we look at the user specifically, two points uh, here to add. Um, so one is the convenience part. Uh, we gave them the single uh, hops to the, to the households. Um, if you compare what they usually have, they all used LPG earlier, so two or three uh, stove burners. Uh, now with just having a single uh, hop, this reduces the convenience uh, for the households itself. Uh, taking maybe more time, just uh, preparing uh, one dish or having one pan. Um, so this reduces the, the convenience uh, for the households. While they reported a positive experience with the devices overall, this is definitely something um, to, to consider uh, when looking at electric cooking, that providing um, also there more convenience by a two or three hop, uh, keeping the price, of course, in mind, and that would be uh, another aspect probably um, to, to discuss. Uh, but households did use the devices uh, for all kind of meals, um, but we could see stacking of devices with um, LPG happening. And the final point I want to uh, add here for, for now is uh, the, the awareness itself of the households. So I think they got relative um, yeah, extensive support from our side. So we handed over devices. They got basically an introduction to the devices. So it's not under the market conditions that uh, you would have if you just go to a store and buy an induction cooktop. Um, so I think the households are, had already a higher chance of using the devices in a way that uh, would be um, in a beneficial way. Uh, they could always contact us uh, as well in terms of any issues and, and questions. Um, and we could see the household slowly adopting uh, to the devices, uh, but awareness and how to cook, and that was mentioned um, also earlier, the heating is very different, some of the dishes are uh, different to prepare. While it's all possible to do, it's a very different style of cooking. So it, it takes time, it takes training, um, and if you are not used to that, especially maybe if you've been a cook for 20, 30, 40 years and suddenly switching to such a device uh, really means a change of your behavior, of, of your style of cooking. Um, so this is something to really keep in mind uh, when, when you think of uh, yeah, shifting the households from either LPG or biomass then to, to electric cooking. Thanks, Florian, for setting the context. And uh, I, th I think three, three things that stand out for me are uh, from your discussion are uh, grid, uh, uh, readiness of grid infrastructure, which we'll come back to in a while. Uh, second is single versus multi-hops. Uh, so as DG sir in the morning said, that in the next few years, we are looking at e-cooking as a substitute until people get adjusted to it. And then in the years to come, when we are looking at like overall transition, then of course, multi-hop is the way to go. Uh, and the third uh, and the most important aspect in the e-cooking transition is the consumer awareness as well as behavior because cooking is a very, very personalized uh, thing. So it, it, of course, is very challenging to kind of enable that transition. Uh, I'd like to now move on to Dr. Srivastava. Uh, sir, uh, Surya Nutan, which has been developed and patented by IOCL, uh, it's, a, it's a great initiative. First of all, I want to congratulate you uh, for developing, for you and your team for developing it. Uh, I want to understand from you a little bit in terms of uh, how do you see the consumer reception? Uh, what's your experience on consumer reception of uh, the, this cook stove? Even though it might be a bit too early for that question, but if you'd like to share some of the learnings and challenges that you faced on the ground. Uh, no, it's, it's functional. Uh, okay, so. Uh, Actually, when I, Ma'am uh, Samal was uh, speaking here, I thought it's a conference on only induction cooktop. But uh, good that uh, you knew Surya Nutan's name at least. Uh, 
uh, at Indian Oil uh, and Indian Oil R&D from where I belong to, uh, last 50 years we have been making products that are being used by all the consumers sitting in this hall. Right from the lubricants that we make, servo to the fuels to any product that we make, we have followed the same route of product development which is evaluating the alternatives, fixing the right alternative, growing it in the lab, then taking it to the field and then taking it for the control commercialization and then full scale commercialization. So right now when Surya Nutan is talked of, uh, we are at a control commercialization step. Just to give you a brief about this product, uh, actually LPG that we use in our country, all of you would be knowing uh, more than 50% of it is imported. And uh, that's the one reason why Indian Oil thought of developing something which is uh, actually going to compete with its own product, but in the interest of the nation, in the interest of our balance sheets, because LPG is something which eats the oil companies very hard. So we thought of developing some product. Then when we evaluated, we found that induction cooktop is and was the answer at that point of time, but uh, uh, we wanted, uh, we, as I said, uh, we are a company who stands in the market, serves the consumers and because we are talking of a consumer centric product, this product Surya Nutan, we thought of having more consumer centric in terms of uh, trying to reduce the cost, not that the cost is too low here in, in the Surya Nutan's case as of now, but compared to induction cooktop powered by solar, it is low and it does not have electrical battery. It is powered by solar, it can be uh, powered by the grid electricity also, simultaneously, separately, and uh, it can store the heat. The electricity is converted into heat and heat is what we store inside the cooker and uh, that heat is utilized for cooking. We thought that in Indian system, uh, heat is something which is required for cooking, especially deep frying, uh, the sabzi making, the uh, pakoras and mithai that we all make, it requires heat and we worked on the heat part of the energy and uh, Surya Nutan operates on uh, the heat part. As I said, we developed it over the last uh, two years, two and a half years and then we put about 100 pieces into field trial right from Lakshadweep to Leh to uh, some central part of India including NCR and uh, uh, we tried to target all kinds of consumers, but uh, majorly the consumers were the ones who were using LPG. A few were the ones who actually used wood and uh, they were from Lakshadweep. Uh, Lakshadweep administration identified these users and gave the addresses and names of those users. We went to all the users and installed the product. There were only two users who were using wood and believe me, they are still using wood. They are not using Surya Nutan which was free of cost or anything else that they get free of cost because they are so used to of just walking out of their home, collecting the wood and coming back, uh, lighting their chulas and making the food. Uh, so when it comes to propagation of Surya Nutan or electric cooking, I think the first thing, you know, in today's uh, context, price is not a very big issue with the Indian consumers. It is the mindset and if we can actually make them aware, if we can actually make them understand the importance of cutting the trees or maybe uh, polluting the environment or their own uh, health benefit, I think that is the first and foremost thing which is required to push any, any e-cooking solution or any technology for that matter. I mean, we are talking of uh, electric cooking, but at Indian Oil R&D, we have been grouped. I have, I have spent 32 years of my life only pushing technology, uh, push products into the market. And best of the customers, best of the consumers, despite of having all the demonstrated benefit of a new technology push product in his industry or in his automobile or wherever, the last question which comes is how cheap it will be. And you know that life cycle cost is something which 
I don't think even the consumers of the world are actually really bothered of. But that is something which has to come in or maybe some kind of innovative financing or some kind of government push or regulation has to come in. Only then these uh, uh, cooking or these practices will change. Otherwise, it is a, a, it is a, a tough road, tough journey ahead as I can see it. Thank you. Um, so you touched upon two important things uh, th that stand out for me. One is the consumer uh, acceptance, which is key for uh, enabling this transition. And second uh, is uh, payback period as well as life cycle cost, which, which was going to be my next question, but you already kind of touched upon that. So I, I'd like to move on to uh, Shruti now. Uh, so Shruti, uh, in, in the past decade or so, shift in the cooking practices has been brought mostly in the rural areas as compared to so much in the urban, if you look at the Ujwala scheme as well as other schemes of the government. So when we talk about e-cooking transition, I mean, I hear several folks talk, talking about uh, that urban areas will bring about that change, while I also hear from a lot of people who are working in the carbon credits as well as other uh, areas where they're working with the social impact organizations like yours, who are working very closely with the rural consumers. So I see there's a lot of acceptance there as well. Where do you see is the sweet spot? Like if the government has to look at this uh, transition in a phased manner, uh, where do you think is the you know, right uh, audience? And another uh, layer I'd like to add to that is the in, uh, institutional commercial consumers and how do we kind of make that judgment? Uh, thanks for that question, Nea. Um, so I feel instead of looking at rural versus urban, right, uh, the other lens that you mentioned, uh, institutional versus commercial, is what we should um, start looking at a lot more. Um, and ha that is because uh, if we kind of shift a household, whether rural or urban, it will be a five-member shift with every household that we do, right? Uh, versus a commercial uh, or an institutional ho household will shift at least 50 people uh, for every household that we, uh, for every institution or commercial establishment that we shift. Uh, also another advantage for this would be that uh, from a rural uh, or a household perspective, uh, we will have the fluctuations uh, on the demand in terms of the off-grid, right? Because they will be cooking at a particular point of time and that will put a lot of uh, peak variations on the grid uh, versus a commercial establishment is generally cooking all day long. So that will also be consistent in terms of the energy consumption. Um, thirdly, I think the point around behavior change and everyone's been bringing that up um, extensively. Um, and I was talking about this uh, to my house help, uh, you know, this morning as well. Uh, and she mentioned, uh, Bhabi, um, how in LG, LPG to pada hai gaon mein, par phir bhi hum chula use karte hain. So even if we say that LPG has been distributed, uh, it's not fully uh, adopted, right? And we have extensive, um, extensive variation in how uh, they take the learning curve because um, like we said there are multiple uh, different dishes which uh, they are very comfortable with on their traditional chulas so shifting that to you know lpg has been a challenge and then shifting that again to electricity uh, based cooking will be a bigger challenge because again we know the fluctuation is still there um, and i feel uh, that's why we should focus more on the institutional and the commercial aspects of it. Um, also, just one more point will be um, just the ease of availability of the fuel, right? Uh, which is again covered in um, in the part where electricity is not consistently available, but comparatively, when we speak of 40% um, um, households still using the solid fuels, that's primarily coming from the rural households. So, if you want to make the shift, and we obviously it looks easier and faster and a low-hanging fruit, what we call in a consulting language, to say, okay, urban can easily shift from, um, you know, LPG to uh, e-cooking. E uh, but the entire point is that will be an incremental or a delta shift. When we're talking about climate change, if 40% of our air pollution is coming from the solid fuels, we need to switch that first and immediately instead of looking at the low hanging fruit of the LPG um, cooking that's happening in the open areas. Yeah. Thanks. So this kind of resonates with the DG Sir's point which he made in the morning that in the next few years we are looking at uh, e-cooking as a substitution not like a 
total shift and that will take uh, some more time to come. Uh, I'd like to now move on to uh, Mr. Mehta. So, uh, so what are the, some of the key initiatives that industry is taking to enable this transition to e-cooking and where do you see the market to be headed in the next few years? Okay, so industry does introduce new technology whenever it's available and uh, the induction cooking option. In fact, there are several e-cooking options like you have radiation, you have contact like a hot plate, you have a rice cooker and of course an induction cooker which is available for customer to use. And the industry tries to innovate and bring in new technology which is already available in the, in the world and is available for the Indian customer also. However, I'll take uh, with what Samal Madam said and this is our experience of the industry is that the adoption of uh, induction cooking is a little difficult on account of having good magnetic vessels which go with the cooking. Now, uh, like she said that she has difficulty in temperature control. That's very natural and that, that comes from her experience because the temperature control depends on the type of the vessel and different vessels will give you different temperature controls. So there are challenges in using induction or at least adopting straight away. Uh, so all your utensils go waste because they are curved bottom and non-magnetic. Uh, that's a challenge which we see as far as adoption is concerned. Second is most of the kitchens are not wired for uh, uh, the 2 kilowatt energy connection which is required to convert the entire household into a cooking this thing. So even let's say uh, there are 1 lakh households and there is a 1.5 kilowatt average connection for a cooking and 70% of them use it simultaneously, you need something like a 10 megawatt of power for these households only or at least that capacity. So that peak capacity has to be developed both at the transmission and distribution level uh, for the induction cooking to succeed. Uh, induction cooking technology still is an imported technology. Uh, we have, in fact, I want to use this opportunity uh, to seek Ministry of Power's uh, help to ask DPIT for a program to indigenize induction technology. Uh, both like there are issues of uh, rural and urban, there is no issue because both technologies are available on grid as well as off grid. The on grid of course works on the electric supply, the off grid works with the battery which is charged or can be charged by solar panel. So when there's no power, it will charge the battery and the person can cook even when there's no power. Both technologies are available, but both are not indigenous. And I think uh, the government has to, because it's a huge push, must invest into R&D and must come out with some sort of a PLI scheme so that we have indigenous induction technology as well as uh, another industry which has to spawn is the utensil industry which will need to go along with the induction industry because the appliance manufacturers will only manufacture the appliance. But since there is a large varied kind of utensils which are required for cooking, so an additional industry will spawn because of the adoption of the induction cooking. So we seek one Ministry of Power's help to get some sort of a policy direction for indigenization and also uh, maybe initially some sort of a support for the customers to adopt. Uh, I remember when I was young, when L LPG was introduced, uh, that point of time Indian oil, Indian used to come out with lots of leaflets and uh, radio programs on how to do cooking on LPG, a similar thing probably I think B needs to do to educate the customers so that the adoptions become faster and easier. So industry is prepared, we need support of the government to take this to the level which is essentially desired by the government. Thanks. Uh, so in the first half of the panel discussion, we have heard a lot about uh, the challenges that uh, 
are there for the adoption of e-cooking, which includes consumer behavior, availability of grid infrastructure, single versus, versus multi, uh, hob stoves, uh, and some of the other challenges. Now I'd like to pivot a little bit and I'd like to request uh, the panelists to kind of throw some light on what could be some of the solutions that uh, we could focus on. What could, how do we enable uh, this transition? How do we work with the consumers to change their behavior? And are, are there any initiatives that the government is planning to undertake uh, in this regard? Is there any initiative that industry is planning to take in this regard? Because I think the onus is on everybody to kind of enable this transition. Uh, so uh, may I please request Ms. Samal to respond to that question and then everybody else, whoever would like to. Thanks, Neha. Uh, so as all the panelists already talked about what are the barriers, what are the, uh, what is the need uh, for the penetration of this uh, clean cooking in the uh, urban as well as rural segment. So everything has its place, uh, in its place right now. Uh, manufacturers are ready with uh, induction hubs. As uh, Sir has mentioned that IOCL has also come up with uh, Surya Newton for, uh, for another uh, replacement of LPG stove. So uh, all uh, all the, uh, what I can say, the uh, uh, sector actually wo uh, working very hard uh, for this energy transition from LPG to uh, electricity. So everything is in its place, but then why the penetration is not, uh, you know, successful. So those factors we should actually focus on. The first and uh, in my view, the most uh, difficult barrier is the mindset of our people and as uh, 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 Shruti mentioned that even if LPG is there, they are still using the biomass option for cooking. So this is the most uh, difficult thing and the most difficult barrier that we are going to face for the penetration of induction hub or any kind of uh, uh, cooking uh, option, uh, clean cooking option we are talking about. This is the first thing. The second thing is, yes, of course, the uh, price, uh, so the induction hub price that we have to bring it down. So uh, as a uh, market uh, aggregation program, ESL is coming up with uh, a program uh, that uh, Mr. Abhishek is there, so he will throw some light, the kind of program they are coming up with uh, the market aggregation so that the price may come down and that can be affordable to the rural segment as well. And the third, option, third uh, barrier I can see as a personal, the ease of operation. So my request to all the manufacturers that please work on the technology and uh, so that some, kind, some ease of operation uh, should come up, uh, you should come up with some ease of op operation in terms of temperature control. So uh, for urban segment, for the commercial establishment, it's okay they can use it properly. But for rural segment and in, in India, the rural segment is a big segment. So for the rural segment, the temperature control is little bit tricky for them. And if, if we, talk in, in the urban segment also, if I, I ask my domestic help to cook in uh, uh, induction hub, she uh, right away she refused. Didi may isme khana nahi bana sakti. So, uh, so that kind of ease of operation we should uh, work out how, the, how easily we can uh, control the temperature like we are doing in the LPG because in, in induction hub uh, we, we have some kind of step, step down approach or step up approach. So that we have to think how we can uh, upgrade the uh, e operation of a induction hub or, or any kind of clean cooking option. So those are kind of barriers I can say and from government side we are trying our best uh, for, uh, through state designated agencies as you know. We have uh, the state designated agencies, and the, uh, those are the partners of Bureau of Energy Efficiency at the state level. So we are also working with them and we have uh, requested them to implement this e-cooking uh, at least for the commercial establishment as DGB mentioned in the morning. that. Uh, 
at least we can start with the commercial establishment and at least we can start this as a alternate option not as a replacement option so those kind of initiatives we are taking and uh, ESL also trying their best to come up with uh, one uh, uh, demand aggregation option so that the price will come down. So these are the kind of uh, initiatives we are taking from our side. Thank you. Yeah, I thought of infusing some positive energy in the room, so I picked up the mic. Uh, there are a few statistics which I want to share with you all. As somebody said that Indian was launched by Indian Oil in 1964. Uh, I was not born even at that point of time, but uh, now that I am part of the development team for Surya Nutan, I am trying to gather how difficult my journey will be to propagate it or to commercialize it in the market. And I'm told that uh, even Indian LPG cylinders, in the first three to four years of their uh, introduction to the market, were not being uh, readily accepted. The numbers are, teen saal mein do hajar number. Do hajar consumers bane the initial teen saal mein. Another figure that I want to tell you is, uh, Indian Oil R&D got its first international award, WIPO award, on development of a energy efficient kerosene stove, kerosene wick stove. We named it as Nutan and it was uh, marketed in the, in the country very widely. So therefore Surya Nutan has now come in. So at least sitting here I feel that 65 to 85 when we got that award it was 20 years at least Surya Nutan will not have to cross this 20 years journey it will be much much less than 20 years at least because today people are more connected there are more uh, awareness there are more tools and there are many uh, lot of awareness about the environment there is lot of awareness about the uh, various uh, initiatives that everybody is taking and people are ready to go out so I feel if we can create some experience centers, at least with Surya Nutan, this is what we are going to do. We are going to create few experience centers in rural India, in urban India, and especially tier 2 and tier 3 cities, which are actually the early adopters of any good technology. You know why? Because they have time to think about themselves. They have time to think about their environment more than the people who are living in metros who have to travel uh, at least a, a, an hour or uh, more than that to reach from one destination to the other. Then there are maids who are who are actually governing our households saying that didi ab to nahi bana sakte. Ye to hum apne hisab se hi banayenge. Aisa tier two, tier three mein hopefully kam hota hai, hota hoga. Lekin metros mein thoda zada hota hai. Uh, Consumers metro mein hai, jinke deep pockets hai, wo de sakte hai utna paisa. So I'm sure uh, this journey will not be too, too long. There will be a time, maybe 23 that we are sitting here by 2030, definitely our Honorable Prime Minister has very rightly given this uh, slogan of mission life and very soon uh, things will change. Thank you. Well, that's very positive uh, statement as well as <laughs> brings in some positive energy into the discussion. So, would you like to share some of the initiatives that industry is planning to so take or has undertaken? I'd like taken? to uh, again add that uh, this is a momentous uh, moment for the cooking industry to grow leaps and bounds. And uh, we seek policy intervention in terms of production link incentives so that the production of such hobs is in India and it does not benefit a neighboring country. So we need the direction and the support from the government and the industry will put in its best because there have been a lot of other production links incentives like the LED and the air conditioner which have been taken very positively and a lot of investments have come into India and product has been developed indigenously, a uh, lot of import substitution has happened. So I believe we seek a similar kind of support from the government so that import substitution can happen and production of these goods 
which will now be in large numbers, not in lakhs, but maybe in crores, uh, is done within the country itself. Thank you. So we discussed, uh, we discussed at length about uh, consumer behavior. I think another challenge that came up in the discussion which was raised by Florian was uh, grid infrastructure. So my next question is that what kind of last mile electricity distribution improvements are required uh, to enable this uh, e-cooking transition? Would anybody like to comment on that, Florian, Shruti, uh, because you work a lot uh, with the rural segment? Uh, Um, yeah, I can just uh, add something from, from our side, from what we've done with uh, or in, in, in GIZ itself. Uh, we didn't look at the household level, so we looked at the, the feeder level. So in, we did a grid assessment and we partnered with a, a DISCOM in Odisha uh, and we selected two feeder. One was basically from an urban side and one from a uh, peri-urban. It was a rural feeder though that, that we selected. Um, and with then with certain assumptions that we made, we used the, the real data that was available and then try to forecast that for the future, what happens if you add 30, 70 and 100% of households to electric cooking, what happens uh, at the feeder level um, in the end and what are potential mitigation measures um, in that as well. So, um, I mean, first of all, this is um, just one or two feeders in the end from one state. So I think such analyses need to be done much more often for a lot of other discoms and for a lot of other feeders uh, because the results you might see are very different. So you probably need to go actually feeder by feeder in the end and discom by discom to really see what needs to be done. Uh, what we could see in our example is that um, with the urban feeder already being almost fully loaded that there is no room to add the additional load of e-cooking onto that uh, without any further investments onto that uh, specific feeder. Um, and again, you have that problem, so to say, that you cannot shift the electric cooking load. So these are just fixed hours that, that you have in your morning, afternoon and uh, evening, late evenings as, as well. You can try to shift other loads, but not the load for the cooking uh, it, itself. Uh, the load in the afternoon is less of a problem because that meets with the uh, solar hours and solar production. So especially the morning and the evening hours that you have to uh, consider. Um, so the, urban feed, uh, the, the rural feeder that we looked at was not fully loaded, so at least at the feeder level, uh, the load of additional electric cooking could be handled there. But I think here we need to probably more look at the household level in the end. I think there was already mentioned earlier, if uh, you have an induction cook stove of maybe 1,500, 2,000 watt, and you add this, is the kitchen itself even ready for this? And I think in many rural households, the answer would be no. Uh, so I think here we need to have a closer look also at the um, household level itself. Uh, in terms of the mitigation measures that we explored, it was in terms of um, demand side management. Again, you would uh, try to shift other loads, um, not the electric load itself, uh, the, the, the cooking load. We looked at adding a rooftop um, for, to, to further um, help mitigate that. Again, it helped very much with the afternoon hours. We looked at battery storage at the feeder level. It helped also to, to a certain extent, uh, but at least the ones that we assumed uh, did not fully mitigate um, all of that. Um, so there are certain mitigation measures that, that you can take, uh, but it definitely needs more investment into the grid. Um, looking at the larger level, I would argue this needs to come anyways. Um, if you really zoom out and look at the very macro level, India announced net zero for 2070. Net zero assumes that you electrify everything that you can. And for that, you need to have a 24-7 reliable uh, grid and then a clean grid. Uh, with most of the power in India coming from solar, um, as well as then wind and biomass uh, contributing to that as well. So this needs to happen anyways. Um, so then why don't you look at electric cooking in there as well, if you know you need to have a 24-7 reliable grid all across India to meet that target of uh, having a net zero target um, in the end. Um, so this is basically something I can um, add from, from our side, but that needs much more investigation. Also, one of the questions that we um, discussed also, maybe at a later stage, we should have a, look, uh, a closer look earlier, is 
how much electricity is actually consumed by electric cooking. Um, I think we took some of the numbers from secondary research, uh, also NITI org, uh, looking at okay, eight to ten cylinders are usually uh, consumed in a, in a household, uh, and then assumed I think four kilowatt hours a day. Now we're talking of very energy efficient devices, and that might even be more energy efficient um, in the future. Um, so how much energy are we actually talking about? Um, we had the numbers earlier of up to 600 terawatt hours, um, but I think even there we had a range uh, that differentiated between almost, I think, 200, uh, 200 terawatt hours. So this, these are significant numbers that we are talking about. So this also needs a close investigation of how much are we in the end really speaking um, about, because that will then really look at the solutions in the end and influence um, that. So I will just stop at this point. But. Thanks, Florian, for sharing that. Um, I think he covered a lot of the points, but I just want to add um, the point that I had earlier made, and this is where uh, commercial cooking comes in. Uh, so you need to shift to commercial cooking to e-cooking first, and in the meanwhile, while we look at increasing the grid capacity for us to be able to manage the load that comes on it if a lot of households start connecting to e-cooking at the same point of time. Another option uh, with Sir uh, Umesh Sir said, uh, shared as well is a solar powered e-cooking and that's coming up uh, really big time uh, which also has an online and offline option so it has uh, integrated solutions where you when you have access to solar power you connect with that and otherwise you can connect to the other source of electricity that you have um, Neha I just want to also uh, comment on the earlier question that you made uh, and ask a question to the audience here we have a lot of manufacturers in the audience I'd like to ask how many of y'all um, have have more than 50% women in your entire value chain? Anyone? More than 50% women in the value chain of uh, manufacturing, distribution, production, research, and development, innovation. Anyone here? Yeah. So, exactly. So the point that I'm trying to make here is, uh, when we talk about development, which impacts women, who are 99% of the users or more, we don't have even probably 5% or 10% women in the manufacturing chain. So when we talk about the challenges of the end consumer, uh, we assume that we are smart enough to understand their challenges and address them. Uh, and Madam, I would differ here. Okay, I'm, sir. I'm sorry for that. I am into commercial cooking. Okay. So we make uh, inductions where 1,000 meals or 2,000 meals are made in every session. Okay. I came from Bangalore yesterday night at 12 o'clock after opening two kitchens there. Okay. We are going to do six kitchens there. Now, I am just trying to tell you, when it comes to industrial production, it is not like a small two kilowatt induction where lot of components are required which needs lot of precision and all that. So making a commercial induction is altogether a different ball game. We make inductions up to 20 kilowatt, 30 kilowatt, 50 kilowatt per unit. So don't relate these two things. So I think you are also reiterating my point. It's Please. easier to shift um, to industrial and commercial because we have viable solutions there. That you are right. Where you don't have a lot of women users, right? And when you're talking about shifting uh, households where women are the primary users, we don't have an understanding of their challenges as deeply as we need to have. So we need to include women in innovation, research and development, and also distribution of the products that we are making to ensure the adoption and the behavior change challenges that we've been talking about. I would add to this. Yes. I have a chef here. Okay. Now, how many chefs are there in hospitality industry who are females? They have increased only off late. Yes. So, the only purpose or the only motivation for me to shift because I have done domestic cooking induction four years back, uh, sorry, for four years mm -hmm. in 2009, 10, 11 and 12. Hardly people knew what is induction. 
and I used to go and convince the ladies in the house by cooking in their houses. Yeah. Now, the, the only purpose of shifting was that it is very easy to convince a male compared to a female. So, because <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> looks like we are I, getting. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. No, no. So, no. You are we, 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 we so I'm so glad that you're go. reiterating my point we again and again. I know. I know. वो लेडी जो बचपन से अपनी माता को जब वो क्रॉल कर रही थी तब से देख रही है कि गैस कैसे चालू करना है, ठीक है? So, you people who are sitting on the dais possibly have seen. Only those inductions which are imported from China, which has got hot pot, temperature, voltage, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's not how commercial inductions are made. Commercial inductions are with volume type. Push in, push off, on, off, badao, kam karo. Baat khatam ho gai. So, wo domestic mein aas sakta hai, aisa nahi hai, nahi ho sakta hai, since you have been telling me. Now, if you attend the second session, you will learn a more. I think I'll end here. Please. Definitely. So, so thank you. Like I said, right? Uh, thank you for uh, reiterating my point. Uh, and the shift, therefore, can happen faster in institutional and commercial organisations. But if we want that shift to happen at a domestic household levels, both rural and urban, we will need to have more females in the entire value chain right from understanding what are the needs of the consumer and why is this challenge of the shift not happening and then producing Indian context uh, products which answer to the different cooking requirements and the cuisines of all the different cultures at a household level again. Right? So, uh, and for the behavior change, if you will have a women do that at the household level, that will uh, be acceptable a lot more versus, uh, you know, a distribution which is done by probably a male member. So, yeah, that was my only point. Thanks. So, uh, I want to add something here, like uh, Shruti was trying to actually mention that it's easy to adopt in commercial sector rather than in domestic sector. And it's not about gender. It's about the, uh, you know, the mindset of the people, whether it's a man or woman, it doesn't matter. Because in urban sector and in the commercial sector, most of the chefs are men. So, uh, and if he's a chef, obviously he is a learned person. You know, means I know, uh, literate and a very educated person. So, it's easy to convince him. And in the uh, uh, domestic sector, in the rural segment, most of the women uh, in our country are not that educated. So it's, it would be difficult uh, to convince them. So that is the difference. Not like, uh, I don't agree, sir, ki, uh, it's very easy to convince a man rather than a woman. <laughs> not at all, sir. <laughs> sure, sir. And I will also but share I my... <laughs> So the question here is, can you get a lady to convince the lady? <laughs> and do you speak the language of the lady to convince her? Yeah. Can I, uh, can and, I speak? And her, okay. sir, just a minute. And her point was that if a lady and if a woman is involved in the uh, R&D process, she can better experience because 99% of our cook are ma uh, women. How many chefs are in our country and how many cooking, how many women in the housemaker are in our country? So that was her point that women should be involved in the R&D sector so that we can also uh, get the real time, you know, the uh, practical problems that the women are facing. That's, please. Ma'am, hello, uh, am I audible? You know, I, while I don't want to differ from or uh, disagree with what Mr. Desai says, I agree with what Shruti says, uh, that it is, uh, you need to uh, involve women. And, but again, I don't, dis I disagree with her saying that there are not enough women in the hotels. I belong to the, the hotel industry. And let me tell you that I started in, the, uh, in this business more than 40 years back. And my batchmates were three, uh, three la women, ladies, who became executive chefs and senior chefs of big companies. All right, so uh, it's not that uh, it's convincing who is important. It is convincing cooking that is important. 
Okay, so uh, let me just put a little point. I want to understand from uh, Ms. Samal what governs this star rating. Because when I go as a, uh, as a domestic buyer from the market, I have been a commercial buyer. So, and we have converted uh, kitchens from gas uh, to uh, induction kitchens successfully and doing very well. And, the, and there are more reasons which I can reiterate. Uh, why we have done that? <clears throat> One, it makes kitchens much more cleaner, which I think you should touch upon. Uh, one important part is what, what, why, uh, what are the criteria that make me buy domestic uh, equipment? When I go to the market, I see uh, Panasonic, I see uh, Philips, I see Sriram, I see Bajaj, I see so many. I don't know what to buy. Where I go and see, uh, when I see a gas range, then I know I have to buy a flame. I have no other uh, issue to work at. Uh, second thing is that there is, uh, in my opinion, in domestic equipment, there's a lot of downtime, which means if I have a gas burner, I can call somebody off the street, come and fix it. Okay, but when it's, it's induction equipment, it's very difficult to get someone to fix it. So my downtime is much longer. So I'm more dependent on online buying. Uh, so I'd like to know this, just the criteria from all of you. Uh, thank you, sir, for your question. Uh, recently, actually, we have introduced the star labeling program, as I mentioned, 1st March 2023. So, uh, uh, right now, uh, manufacturers have not started registering in this program. So, this program is based on the energy consumption uh, required for a boiling uh, time. And Mr. Mukherjee is here. He is actually our uh, a pioneer in the standards uh, making process. And he helps from class uh, to uh, actually bring up with our standard performance standard for any kind of uh, uh, appliances we want to introduce in the standards and labeling program. So recently, we have introduced these standards, one star to five star. And we have mentioned that what should be the energy consumption for one star, what should be the energy consumption for two star, three star, four star, and five star. So whenever you will go to the market, now you will not get it, sir, because manufacturers have not started registr registering in our portal. And I would like to appeal the manufacturers, please start registering in SNL portal so that it would be available in the market and uh, people will get to know what are the uh, energy efficient uh, options available. Actually, sir, the uh, architecture uh, is like that. Whenever we introduce any kind of appliance, we introduce in the voluntary uh, phase. Uh, voluntary phase means if one manufacturer wants to register, he can register. If he doesn't want to register, he, he, he may not register. So this is the voluntary phase going on. And once two to three years, as we are, uh, all are discussing here, it may take another five, four, five years to penetrate these induction hubs and clean cooking options in, uh, in our Indian economy. So uh, uh, with the time, we will make it mandatory once the market is actually matured and the manufacturers are uh, uh, registered under SNL program and more and more uh, sta uh, labeling product will be available in the market. So you have to wait a little bit uh, so that in the market you will find the label labeled product uh, of induction hubs. Uh, well, we've opened it up uh, to Hello. the audience. Uh, yes. yeah. So we can take two more questions Hello. Hello. in the interest of yeah. time. Good afternoon, okay. Hwada from Y Society. I think a decade, more than a decade back, we tested uh, 12 leading brands of the industrial cooktops. So the rating is matching what uh, Ms. Samal said, that 80% efficiency. Yes, it is very much there. But uh, the operation is quite complicated. And even after a decade also, we find still the operation controls are quite uh, you know, difficult. The second, uh, the another point is how the wise, uh, housewives will understand how to operate it. The second point is cookwares. There also, uh, during our uh, decade back testing, we found there were no cookwares available. But a couple of brands from South, they supplied cookwares, you know, like kadai and the, you know, pans, along with the uh, this thing, cook, uh, induction cooktops. 
So we used as a reference for comparative testing project. You know. But at that time, there was no BI standard. Even I think IC standard was also not there. But we followed the, what manufacturer had been claiming. You know. So we did that frying test. Chapati maker, you mentioned, you know, the, if you use that uh, MS steel or Loha ka tawa, it's very equally good for uh, even fluffing of chapatis also. So that is, you know, there, there's no myth that chapati cannot be made, you know. And frying, I was tra uh, traveling from Mumbai to Delhi in a Rajdani. So I was uh, on the <coughs> Mumbai Central Lagos, one of the uh, bhaji makers, you know, he was frying a lot of, you know, bhajis in the evening, you know. So I, he was using this induction cooktops. So I told him uh, how good it is. He said, I, had, I don't have to use, uh, uh, what do you call, angiti. It takes about one hour to use this thing, fire the angiti, you know. So he don't have to use the angiti. Then he didn't have to switch off the angiti also. It takes one hour to switch off the angiti also. Then I got down at uh, this thing, uh, Badoda. There also one other fellow was making, making the chapatis as well as the bhajis, you know. So he, he was also using the same industrial cooktop. This is more than 11 years back. So they said it's very, very energy efficient. You can use it for even 10, year, 10 hours continuously. You know. So that's the, you know, you should know what is the cookware to be used. You know. Even the cast iron cookware are nowadays available. They can be used. They are equally efficient. You know. It has to be magnetized. Or that uh, 430 grade of SS steel there also is equally this thing useful. You know. The third thing is uh, for ESL, uh, Ministry of Tamil Nadu. They supplied uh, induction cooktops in their uh, for uh, beneficiaries uh, free of cost they during Jayalitha time. You know, they supplied induction cooktops free of cost to the ration card holders. You know. So yes, also can adopt this scheme, you know, supplying free of cost or maybe at a very nominal cost. Thank you. Okay, thanks for sharing. Should I, should I add yes. what you were saying, railway stations? Around four, five years back, railway had put a ban on the railway station. The moment they put a ban, people used to approach us. I still know on Balsar railway station, there is a poor chap who is using our induction, which is only 2 kilowatt. Now what happens on railway stations, there is a continuous dust formation when the railway passes, the train passes. Then there is a lot of oil because he is frying. So oil and dust, because there is a fan below which is going to suck fresh air, is going to suck all these things inside. So 10 saal se wo use kar raha hai. Main usko free me repair karke de raha hu, 10 saal se. The re only reason is induction use kar raha na. He will tell another 10 people ki induction use karo. So uh, he is very right. Uh, and uh, I would request people to just sit down and uh, attend the second session. You will learn much more from me. Thank you. Well, we can take one final question. Uh, so, I have a question. I am a user who is 97. Se. Electric tandoor, elect rice cooker, and rice cooker, I have a time of dal, sabzi. या दाल चावल दोनों बना देती थी कैसे मैम उसके बीच में एक डिवाइडर लगा देती थी खुद ही और उसमें सेपरेटर उसी में ही सेम में ही बना के जाती थी और 12 घंटे मतलब अगर मैं कहीं गई हूं 10 घंटे बाद आई हूं तो मुझे वार्म खाना घर में मिलता था मतलब यह मैं नहीं कहूंगी कि यह गलत है कुछ हार्म भी होंगे वो मैं नहीं कह रही पर एक चीज का फायदा है जितनी वर्किंग वुमेंस हैं अगर वो मेड्स पे नहीं डिपेंड रहना चाहती so, they can do this work. And the induction was in 2005. I would like to give one suggestion. That BACS or BYPL should give a different meter for the kitchen. So, that there can't be any way to say that you are making electric things and the bill is also coming. When the bill comes from the AC, the mixes and all the things from the other things. I mean, I don't just have this. I eat from 1997 at home. I've been eating a lot of time. I've put a chakki in which I put a dhalia, idli, sambar, everything I've made. I've made a paste and I've made a paste. Only open it and open it in 10 minutes. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
और इट्स नॉट मैं एक हाउस होल्ड कर सकती हूँ तो वर्किंग वुमेंस तो अपने आप कर सकती हैं Thank you so much for sharing that, ma'am. Give me two minutes. Just uh, one minute, yeah, sir. Uh, I think she's made two very, very good points, and again, that's coming from a woman user, which can be easily solvable and added to your solutions. Mm -hmm. Having a divider in your cooker yes. and having separate electric meters, so that the burden of the electricity does not fall on the women. Uh, and I think this is the kind of innovation and solutions that we ne need for it to be adoptable. Yes. What, sir? what what she says is right we should go for vertical cooking vertical cooking means you have a base vessel which will generate the heat so the water gets heated now in that container put a couple of potatoes uske upar ek separator agar nahi rakhna hai to what he rightly says there is there there are these types of uh, vessels available only one vessel you require which should work on induction the remaining vessels need not be such and in those partitions you can put any vessel what my wife does is she will put rice in the middle then vegetables on the top put a 20 minute timer and she will go away from the kitchen in indian households jo lady ka role hai वो बहुत कॉम्प्लिकेटेड है इन द मॉर्निंग अगर ससुर है तो ससुर भी अपनी बहू को बोलेगा मुझे दवाई दे दो हस्बैंड अपनी वाइफ को बोलेगा और बच्चे भी अपने माँ को बोलेंगे अगर उसको 20 मिनट मिल गए तो स्वर्ग मिल जाता है so we'll hear a lot from sir as well as esl in the next session and we'll also discuss a lot more about some of the other solutions as well as enablers for e cooking uh, but i think I, I, we need to wrap up now because we have to leave some time uh, for the next session as well uh, i think it was a very interesting session because we touched upon several consumer centric behaviors ap approaches as well as solutions we heard uh, directly from the consumers uh, themselves uh, we touched upon grid infrastructure availability technology Uh, as well as uh, induction cookstove lab labeling program that be has launched so i think it was a very riveting and rich discussion thank you so much for joining us for this discussion and please stay back uh, for the next session and uh, uh, over to so uh, yeah. uh, before concluding this session uh, thanks to neha and it was a very interesting session to discuss freely with all our uh, daily needs and daily problems we are actually facing so uh, everybody actually trying their bit to uh, introduce and penetrate this uh, e cooking options in the household sector But my only request to the manufacturers please uh, uh, please look at this option whether it is possible like the commercial uh, uh, cooking options like it can increase and decrease so that it will be very easy for the you know the household uh, ladies to adopt so this is my only request to the manufacturers please look at this thank you all for attending this session and participate thank in the labeling program <laughs> that we has recently launched on induction cook stoves thank you very much for that engaging session i think uh, still we have a lot of questions bahut sare aur sawal hain bahut sari aur baatein hain jo aap karna chahte hain but i think uh, jo hamare networking lunch hoga uske dauran ya uske baad we'll have a lot of time wherein we can you know network with each other and discuss our thoughts and whatever ideas we are carrying ladies and gentlemen in the interest of time we'll have to quickly wrap this session and uh, before we do so may I please request uh, the moderator uh neha to kindly please hand over tokens of appreciation to each of our uh, uh, you know eminent panelists seated here on the dais ladies and gentlemen uh, please join us in thanking each of our panelists beginning with ms pravata nalini thank you ma'am for adding value to this session and thank you for sharing your thoughts with us today ladies and gentlemen please put your hands together as we thank and appreciate the presence of our eminent speakers Dr. Umesh Srivastav, plants are significant of life, of origin, a new beginning, a new start. So we're presenting these beautiful plants, Mr. Florian. Thank you very much for joining us here on this panel. 
लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन तालियों में क्यों कमी है सर थोड़ी जोरदार तालियां होनी चाहिए दिस इज गोइंग टू मोटिवेट ऑल ऑफ अस मिस्टर अनिल मेहता and ms shruti devara these discussions will serve as a fuel to some fruitful solutions which will follow after this cleaner greener and sustainable future thank you very much thank you very much panelists and i think we will have a group picture now before we finally conclude and then we'll move on to the next discussion and before that we have a technical presentation by eesl plants are significant of a life a possibility ek nayi shuruaat तो बहुत ही खूबसूरत टोकन है अप्रिसिएशन का एंड आई थिंक वन ऑफ द बेस्ट वेज टू वैल्यू एंड रिस्पेक्ट द प्रेजेंस ऑफ आर एमिनेंट डिग्नेटरीज ऑन द डायस थैंक यू वेरी मच तो इस पैनल डिस्कशन की शुरुआत हम जानते हैं कि हमने एक टेक्निकल प्रेजेंटेशन जो कि प्रवाती मैम ने प्रेजेंट की थी बी से उसके साथ शुरुआत की थी अब अगले पैनल डिस्कशन की शुरुआत एक टेक्निकल प्रेजेंटेशन जो कि ई की तरफ से है उसके साथ शुरुआत करेंगे एंड देन वील डाइव इन टू द प्रोसीडिंग्स ऑफ द पैनल डिस्कशन सो लेडीज एंड जेंटमैन will now be requesting mr abhishek gupta general manager from eesl to kindly shine on eesl's e cooking market transformation program let's welcome mr abhishek on the dais zor dar taliya he is a highly experienced professional with over 22 years of expertise in forming new business verticals building teams formulating business strategies finalizing contracts conducting commercial negotiations making proposals managing tendering processes execution projects and so many other things welcoming you very good afternoon to one and all thank you so much bureau of energy efficiency class for giving us an opportunity to speak on this august forum and especially on this day which happens to be one of the most important days going forward in our generations and next generations to come this topic of e cooking is actually close to everybody's stomach if not heart and as far as i know and i feel personally that if food is good good in a house house remains much more healthy wealthy and wise and and peace and prosperity also is there coming to the things what we as esl are doing especially in this domain apart from the activities what we have been doing in energy efficiency per se we have found that this is something which is a real challenge for us because it is not something which a person encounters you know maybe once a day or maybe once a week or so which normally most of our appliances do because normally electrical appliances you know just we use it fix it and forget it but here comes the induction and other technologies of cooking which are going to be evaluated every day at least 3 times so the solution has to be good enough robust enough and long lasting enough to cater to the requirement of the people and especially the most important person of the house the women herself so ladies and gentlemen a lot of word has been said during the day what is the need you know 
what are the initiatives what is the current situation some 10% or 5% people are using e cooking in some way or the other so i'll not venture more in that would i like to go straight to what esl per se is trying to do especially in clean cooking space i'll not call it purely e cooking i'll say clean cooking uh, why am i saying so is because of the reasons that esl is trying to not only promote electric cooking as an option through say induction cooker stove or electric cooker rather with solar induction cooker stove based solution as well and why are we doing like this is because of the fact that as rightly pointed out in the in the earlier discussions as well that yes 22 and half hours of electricity is available in the rural household 23 and half hours of electricity is available in urban household but when you are cooking and at that time if you don't have electricity you have got serious problem at your hand and that's why you need to understand the solution has to be available right at the right time and more importantly at much more convenient uh, mode of operation as well as i think additional secretary sir was very clearly explaining and so was uh, various uh, people from bureau of energy efficiency esl has been really good in doing demand aggregation activity per se yes that is there in our core and we have been able to do these activities because of so many people who are working along with esl directly indirectly and helping us to find out the solution which is going to touch the lives of the people find out the solution which is going to be there as long lasting solution and definitely an affordable one so ladies and gentlemen this is a forum where i want to invite all my stakeholders not only the manufacturers rather the carbon guys who can you know part fund our initiatives the government machinery uh, bureau of energy efficiency ministry of power and so many other organizations which are you know helping us to do various activities this slide is favorite to me actually and that's where you actually focus on adaptability affordability and availability these are the three fundamental challenges what esl have been facing for propagating the programs whatever we do the availability we have seen through our ujala program and gram ujala program street light programs and, and so many other programs as well that the availability of the technology at the last mile is going to be key for adoption unless we have the electric induction cooker stove or electric cooker or for that matter solar, solar induction cooker stove available to the people it would be definitely difficult to adopt that we are focusing on this aspect by partnership with various organizations which are actually working on the ground through say self help groups through women led organizations who are working very very well and effectively organizations like seva uh, and and so many other other who are there in this space who are trying to put women in the center of overall value chain and and this is just one of the initiatives we are we are trying to do another one is you know e cycle where again women is women centric approach is being made second is the affordability we understand that we we are at the bottom of the pyramid in terms of our per capita income of the household you know and that's where onus lies on all of us to make the product affordable enough for the last my people to actually be able to procure that and that's where apart from demand aggregation lot of innovation would be required from industry you know as somebody very rightly pointed out that we have been dependent on mostly imports for inductions but naturally if we have to adopt if we have to make it large we need to do it indigenously there can be so many incentives provided by government you know uh, by by uh, 
some PLI scheme or 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 maybe some uh, tax swap, some uh, discounts or some freebies and all. But ultimately, affordability will be drawn by that development and manufacturing of the technology product indigenously. And that's where onus very critically lies on my partners from the manufacturing sector. And third one is adaptability. Here adaptability is of paramount importance because we are talking to the most important section of the lifestyle, that is hunger. We understand that it is not about selling a product. It is not about selling a light, you know, uh, what we have been doing. Though initially we had so much of, ex you know, learning just for change of, you know, normal light to LED light uh, behavior, we find this task to be even more challenging. And that's why we find that we have to come up with something out of box. We have to come up with something which we have not done as of now. We have been having multiple stakeholder consultations with manufacturers, uh, you know, NGOs, carbon finance guys. But I think that's where we are uh, little, little, uh, uh, you know, behind than what we should be doing. And I'll request the August gathering here to please communicate to us, be part with our, uh, be partner with our scheme of things, help us to understand the demand, help us to reach the last mile and help us to handhold the people who are there at the last mile to understand that not, it is not only economically viable and economically better for you to cook on electric mode, rather it is good for taste as well. And that will not happen, you know, just by two months or three months of handholding. It is going to be a long journey for us. And experiences, what, what uh, I think, Mr. Desai have been, you know, sharing about, you know, uh, with commercial related activities, maybe more intensive activity has to, be ha has to be done in case of when we are talking about the home appliances based solutions. These are a few initiatives what we have done as of now. The electric in induction cook stove program we are trying to demand, aggregate the demand. We have got, you know, around 20,000 orders also uh, in Ladakh and Northeast areas. Solar induction cooking, cook stove solution, another very, very important program for us going forward because we are trying to connect to the people who don't have the right connection of electricity, right means in terms of right quality of power, certainty of availability of power, and the affordability of power. So these three aspects, wherever we find a particular strata of society is missing, we are trying to propagate this solution primarily on those things, on, on those areas. And actually the third one, electric cooker program, which is relatively, we find that it is going to have good taker in urban class and semi-urban class going forward. So we'll be focusing on that accordingly. When we, thought, when we thought about solar induction cook stove solution, we thought, let us not only focus only on the rural segment. Let us try to make it something which helps a person feel better that they are contributing to the goal of the nation towards moving towards green you know, uh, footprint. We are coming up with multi-burner solar induction cook stove solution, wherein there will not be any battery storage per se, it would be net metering based solution and it would be targeted to urban class, especially the people who have got say five kilowatt and above connections. Because we find there is, there is a latent hunger within the society which want to, wants to contribute to the green journey of India and we want to specifically target through our aspirational model to them. For below poverty line and rural, we would be going with single solution, single burner solution as of now. We find that cost is a major hindrance there because of the fact that the moment I put battery in the overall scheme of things, my cost increases at least 30% if not more. We find that 
we'll go ahead as of now with single burner solution because it will help us check the cost it will help us understand the market going and you know we'll be tweaking this model going forward based on the understanding what we develop over a period of time and naturally in urban and semi urban area it will be solar induction cooker stove induction cooker stove and e cooker all three options this is the slide which actually opened my eyes when i saw it for the first time actually i copied it from somewhere <laughs> so <laughs> when we are trying to understand what is the kind of impact a solution is going to make on the lives of the people we came across that out of 17 sustainable development goals solar induction cook stove covers 10 out of them this is probably as far as my understanding goes is the single program which is cutting across so many sdgs in one shot it is not only covering the poverty hunger uh, you know every aspect what we normally see in overall day to day time this is covering that that's why we have been you know in in close discussion with ministry uh, you know mnre for this matter to help us design this program and i'm happy to share that you know uh, it is in right way of and right stage of discussion wherein we'd be coming up with the right solution in in due course of time in fact our first Uh, pilot activity uh, expression of interest is already out in the market wherein we are trying to get support from philanthropic organizations and multi multiple other organizations like giz uh, you know who may help us do this pilot and understand the baseline and develop the baseline and accordingly will be taking it further these are the conditions considerations what we evaluated when we chalked out the three different programs who would be the target beneficiary yes we have got separate segregation on that carbon credit another element wherein we are trying to part fund the solutions through this we have been doing multiple consultations with respective parties and we have we am happy to share that we have got good response from the carbon credit business houses wherein they are telling that they can we can achieve good in you know cost saving if we go for carbon credit realization and why is it so is because of the fact that it is cutting across 10 as sustainable development goals the valuation of these carbon credits are going to be amongst the highest in the in this class government support yes we have been talking to uh, ministry about providing some support in terms of the support what is available to the rooftop solutions where in you know uh, some specific subsidies are provided to the consumer category of 1 to 3 kilowatt similar subsidy would be extended to this program as well operating cost another barrier we have seen uh, why uh, you know ujjwala per se scheme uh, happened to be a very good scheme for reaching the last mile but an interesting data which held us back was the there are only 3 lpg cylinder refills in a year per per lpg in india on per annum basis it immediately struck us that if 3 cylinders per annum is the refill on an average in india think about the rural area it means probably they have not moved ahead from their you know conventional cooking to lpg based cooking and that's where we find that opportunity lies when we are trying to do a couple of surveys in in couple of states we found that the bigger barrier for them is the operating cost because they have to shell out you know 600 to 800 rupees per month for actually funding the cooking uh, <coughs> related uh, expenses and that is that is good amount to actually part with because of the fact that we have been seeing that we are at the lowest in terms of per capita income and this aspect is very very important for us to come up with the solution of solar induction cooker stove wherein the operating cost aspect is going to be covered fully peak power demand another re requirement for us going forward as i think uh, gentleman from giz very rightly explained that if we are doing morning and evening cooking we are actually cooking at the peak hour time 
and that is something which is an area of concern because we have to put additional capacities for uh, you know uh, catering to that kind of energy requirement though in urban areas we found that yes a lot of cooking happens during off peak hours as well but if i go i'm going to connect rural area with normal induction cook stove i'm going to be in big trouble uh, because the peak power requirement will shoot and you know a lot of issues related to get wood, grid would also be there so that's the reason we have uh, we have uh, you know have a different approach for different masses going forward in fact this demonstration we did on 21st april 2023 and you know we were also very apprehensive whether we can what do you call chapati phula sakte hain kya actually we could do that with at least the minimal of the expertise is required to pull out this chapati for sure so we could understand ki aisa to nahi ki kahin hum perception mein jee rahe hain reality thodi si alag hai probably hum haath laga kar ke dekhenge to baatein ban sakti hain we did the fry option also and we did it on 1200 watt dc induction i think same is placed out at the back as well where in this 1200 watt dc solution happens to be the right solution as far as our understanding goes especially when we go ahead with solar induction cook stove option in fact honorable minister tasted it and he tweeted also out of uh, you know uh, happiness that this is going to be the right solution going forward and it will help us connect to the right masses at the right place that's all i had to say thank you so very much thank you thank you very much sir for that insightful presentation and we really uh, uh, you know i think uh, we all going to benefit with the wonderful thoughts values and i think uh, jo details aapne diye hain kafi hamare kaam aayenge ladies and gentlemen very quickly we move on and uh, uh, all of us understand that we are in dearth of time thoda sa late ho raha hai to jaldi jaldi se aage badhte hain and uh, the lunch is also delayed now this panel discussion which is about to begin now is on the enablers for adoption of e cooking solutions in india this session is going to focus on enablers for adoption of e cooking solutions such as finance demand aggregation carbon credits and business models may I please begin by inviting the panelists on the dais we have mr animesh mishra from eesl ladies and gentlemen please welcome mr animesh mishra with a huge round of applause let's welcome mr pk mukherjee from clasp a very warm welcome to you sir welcoming on the dais ms anjana horo from dharma life welcome ma'am mr anil desai from flame onil technologies mr samrat sen gupta from ekhi energy services limited and mr sunil mani from ceew Moderating this session, we have Mr. Prasoon Pandey from CLASP. Let's have a louder applause, ladies and gentlemen. We do understand that this is a, a session which is immediately before the lunch, but I think this is going to be very, very interesting, and we look forward to an interactive and insightful session. So we are short of one chair. Requesting the hotel management, if you are around, to kindly please provide us with one more chair on the dais. So we have the chair. so rearranging a bit to adjust thank you very much so ladies and gentlemen we welcome our panelists uh, on the dais and now we, i would like to hand over to the moderator to kindly please take over thank you
thank you, ma'am, uh, for the introduction and uh, warm good afternoon to everyone. Uh, welcome to today's second panel. Uh, this session would largely focus on discussing enablers for electric cooking transition in India. Uh, I'm Prasoon, your host uh, and moderator for next uh, one hour. Uh, one hour. Um, in the previous panel, we discussed a lot about barriers. And now I realize, like, uh, literally this session is the barrier between you and your lunch. So I promise to be efficient to the point. Uh, before we start, uh, we would, uh, I would in fact uh, introduce, like, like our uh, panelists introduce themselves via, very quickly. So maybe Sunil, starting with you. Hello, good afternoon everyone. Uh, I'm Sunil. I lead uh, CW's program on clean cooking energy access. I'm a program lead at CW. <clears> Hi, <throat> Mukherjee from CLASP. Uh, we are supporting the Bureau of Energy Efficiency in India and the standards and leveling program, climate change and energy access. Apart from India, we are also working in other countries, neighboring countries, particularly Asian countries, Africa, and Latin American countries. Thank you. I'm Anil Desai. We are into making solutions for commercial kitchens for corporates, railways, airports, etc. So you can imagine how big these inductions must be. But I have done for three, four years domestic inductions. That is the only reason I am here, so that I can remove the myths which are related to domestic inductions. Hi, myself Animesh Mishra, Head Sales and PR for EESL. Good afternoon. I am Anjana Huro. Uh, I'm from Dharma Life. I lead their clean energy vertical. Uh, Dharma Life is a social enterprise and we work on various causes like clean energy, indoor house pollution, health and hygiene, nutrition, etc. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Samrat Sangupta. I represent uh, EKI Energy Services Limited and our main businesses is in carbon market and carbon finance. And in global scale, we can say by volume of carbon credit, we are the largest carbon developer. Thank you. Uh, thank you, panelists, for the introduction. Uh, perhaps uh, I would like to start with a context setting question, uh, that too for CEW. Uh, so, Sunil, um, um, you have been leading IRES studies. Uh, which was also referred in the previous discussions. Uh, we all know that 5% number on access to e-cooking that is coming from your studies. But I want you to uh, deep down a bit further on the findings of your, of your study uh, and also talk a bit about rural versus uh, uh, urban findings. Uh, I hope this would uh, set the context, nice context for the discussion further. Sure, thank you. Right, so uh, as you mentioned, uh, we conducted India Residential Energy Survey, which was a nationally representative household survey. Uh, it was conducted in 2020, right before COVID. Uh, and in IRIS, we found that uh, the e-cooking penetration in the country is at 5%. Uh, in urban India, it stands at uh, around 10%, and in rural India, it's around 3%. Uh, we also uh, saw significant variation across uh, different Indian states. And we found that the major driver uh, for e-cooking adoption was um, affordability and uh, electricity uh, tariff. So just to explain on that a bit more, uh, for instance, Delhi and Tamil Nadu, which have lowest electricity tariff for residential consumers uh, in India, had the highest penetration of e-cooking devices. Um, and we also f uh, found that, uh, you know, found some interesting variations, for instance, in states like Assam, uh, that also has, you know, highest, a uh, very high penetration of e-cooking. Uh, that is, I think, uh, in the third rank after Delhi and Tam Tamil Nadu. But when we looked at, <coughs> and there, uh, the electricity tariff is also not that low, and also the, the affordability barrier is there, consumers are not very rich. But still, you know, when we uh, tried to deep dive into it, we found that, you know, the consumers there are actually using electric coil-based uh, cookstuffs, right, which is the traditional solution, uh, traditional e-cooking solution. 
Um, and when we also uh, try to understand the uh, payment behavior, the electricity bill payment behavior during the survey, we found that most of those households did not possess a copy of their electricity bill while the survey was going on because we had also asked for the uh, you know to for, ask the uh, respondents to show a copy of their electricity bills uh, they did not have that which uh, indicates the possibility of you know those households could be you know using electricity you know through let's say things like theft and all uh, which is why you know they are actually relying on um, you know uh, 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 induction uh, uh, coil based uh, electric cooking solutions so those are some of the uh, drivers, you know, the affordability and um, the electricity tariff, which we found to be the most important explanatory uh, factors behind um, e-cooking uh, adoption in the country. So yeah, I'll keep it to that for now. Uh, and Sunil, um, maybe just a quick follow-up question. Said, um, I mean, in your various studies, you have tried to identify certain certain next steps that need to be taken in the country. So it would be nice to know about them as well. Right. So, <clears throat> as I said, uh, I mean, uh, and 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 I think in terms of the next steps, uh, you know, we look at it. We look at the future of electric cooking uh, to be, you know, uh, done in a phased manner. So, uh, you know, we believe that right now uh, it may not be the best time for India to actually shift to exclusive use of electric cooking because of uh, a, a lot of factors. But you know, two factors could be very very important here. Uh, first is the emission intensity. The Emission intensity of grid in India is still, you know, significantly higher compared to something like LPG or PNG. So, uh, you know, unless and until we are able to, you know, make our grids gre grid greener, you know, uh, we should hold on to that. Uh, second is, of course, you know, the load on the grid. Um, you know, because a lot of e-cooking happens during the peak hours. So, if you know all of all of Indian households suddenly shift to e-cooking, you know, we'll see a lot of load coming into the grid, uh, you know, uh, during peak hours. So, so because of all of these solutions, we, we suggest that in the short run, we should uh, continue to target richer households um, who have, uh, you know, for whom uh, affordability is not a barrier, who have enough disposable income to actually buy the electric cooking appliances. Uh, and this is also very important because, you know, LPG in India right now is sold at below the market price, right? So for instance, right now the price of LPG is around 1100 in the country, even though it may seem high, but the actual market price is actually much more than that, right? So uh, all the OMCs are actually, you know, still selling it at a subsidized price and which is why, you know, last year the government of India had also compensated the oil marketing companies, you know, to the tune of 22,000 crores for the loss that they made because they were selling LPG below the market price. So, 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 so basically, if we continue to target uh, the richer urban households what, uh, for e-cooking penetration, what will happen is that they will start adopting e-cooking solutions, which will then free up you know, the LPG for the poorer households who are residing in rural areas. Uh, then you know, government can actually sell it at a much lower price to the rural consumers who are you know, currently struggling with affordability as a significant barrier you know, in terms of their transition to LPG. Um, and then in the meanwhile also continue to, uh, you know, drive um, area agnostic behavioral campaigns, uh, you know, to, to basically bridge the perception barriers, perception barriers, because, you know, in IRIS we found that, you know, there exists significant perception barriers among Indian households and around one third of Indian households uh, uh, think that, you know, uh, I mean, do not really trust on electric cooking and they say that, you know, it's not really feasible. Uh, you know, to shift uh, for all of their cooking needs, and it's also not faster, it's also not uh, cheaper, which is not the case, right? Electric cooking is significantly cheaper when you compare it with LPG in the current prices. So there are those perception barrier barriers that exist, and you know, so basically in the short run, we should continue to focus on urban households and you know, drive uh, area agnostic behavior change interventions so that you know, people become aware about the benefits of e-cooking, and then. Uh, and then basically the, this, this, all of this shorter interventions will give us enough time to focus on you know, e-cooking penetration uh, in the urban community and then you know, that will also give us some time uh, because you know, the, the penetration will increase in urban areas. Uh, you know, eventually we will also see economies of scale and the prices coming down of e-cooking devices so that in the long run it ends up becoming uh, cheaper for rural households as well so that they can also start transitioning to them in a phased manner. So that would be a long-term solution and that will also give us enough time to clean our grid systems, to make it greener so that you know, we can see a sustained transition towards e-cooking. So that's what uh, you know, 
uh, our recommendation is about the next steps in terms of India's transition towards e-cooking solutions. Um, thank you, Sunil, for the interesting insight that immediate transformation may not be productive enough for the country. And it's a long-term approach, which I think uh, DG also uh, recommended in the previous sessions. Uh, you also touched upon the need to uh, kind of contain the energy consumption when it comes to electric cooking. And this is uh, uh, when I tap, tap on to Mukherjee, sir, who has been leading energy efficiency policy efforts in the country. Uh, so, Mukherjee, sir, we uh, learned about certain efficiency policies uh, uh, being discussed in the first session. We already have one for induction hobs, uh, microwave ovens are also covered. But uh, how do you see the whole policy space transitioning uh, in next five to six years? Or um, let me rephrase this question. How do you want it to evolve over the next decade? Thank you, <clears throat> Thank you Prasun. Now, since morning, we have been discussing about how to motivate the consumer, how to promote the product and all that. One thing really concerns me is the quality. You know, I've been using this uh, particular product, induction hub, for more than, uh, say, more than, uh, more than 10 years. And you will be surprised because I'm not blaming any manufacturer as such, but I had to replace the stove thrice. And because, you know, I'm involved, I was involved in the standard making also, even the writing the stand, formulating the standards in the induction hubs, even I was also associated, even for waste labeling program. So I know ins and outs about the standards. So I tried to, I just called the service technicians. I, I told him that you open in front of me. You know, the, one of the things which is very, very, you know, I think, I mean, which can uh, affect the performance and the quality of the stove is that I think someone mentioned about that. There is a small grid in, in the below and there is a fan. And I am a Bengali. We are non-vegetarian, take a lot of non-vegetarian items, so frying, the type of oil we use, what happens that oil does everything, it sucks and it chokes. So once you choke it, it gets a choke and all the oil, they, cons they settles down on the contacts. So that completely reduces the creepage distance and clearances. So there is a possibility of short circuiting. So short circuiting and the fan choked means the product gone. So my point is that we cannot change our food habit also. We have to also go for that. So in that case, what you need? You need a chimney. You need exhaust fan also. So all these combinations definitely add to the, you know, the performance. But my point is that when you say the quality, what is quality? Is the totality of the features or the characteristics of a product or the services, which has the ability to satisfy the stated and implied needs of a consumer. Implied needs means I switch on the lamp, lamp glows, it is, there's the implied needs. But there are many things which are there, which are the stated needs. For stated needs, you have to have a standard. Thankfully that we have an induction of standard performance today. I see, of course, they developed the standard much earlier. The question is that safety part is looked after by BIS compulsory registration scheme, which is mandatory, IS 302-2-6. We are all sure about the quality, I mean safety. Energy, yes, it is now covered by B's labeling program. Today it is voluntary, tomorrow it will go to the mandatory. But what about the performance? There are about six or seven parameters which are there in the standards, we forget about that. My point is that how to tackle that? Yes, there are solutions. Secondly, somebody was talking about the cookware. If, uh, if you all look at the, your pressure cooker, the base, there is an ISI marking. Means that any pressure cooker which uses that, that material, it has the material has to comply with the BIS, BIS you know, standard. Why not have some sort of a certification process for the cookware material? And Mr. Wado was telling, you know, AISI grade 430, uh, 304 or 439. Why can't we have a standard? We have to check whether we have a standard for that cookware. If it is there, where the certification is necessary, what happens then? Market will not be flooded with, you know, sort of a third graded ferrite materials. And what happens? It, it affects the performance and the quality and the efficiency of the products. So here, for the performance and the quality, cookware is also 100% responsible as the product. I think this is what I can summarize. But your next question is that if you see the IEC or IS standards, you, most of you may not be knowing there are 37 kitchen appliances which are being used world over. We have the standard, but what happens? 
Unfortunately, because I was a member of the council board in IEC, I was also, re I represented many, you know, uh, technical committees. I mean, uh, BIS officers also there, I think they can also, I mean, come uh, supplement what I am saying. Problem is that even IEC, they are very, very active on the safety part. Because safety in many countries, they are, you know, mandatory. But performance standards is very, very neglected. For example, out of 37, IC has prepared, developed only seven performance standards, so in India also. Even out of seven in, uh, you know, performance standards, only five are you know, mentioning the you know, energy efficiency. Microwave uh, oven is one of them, induction oven one is them. But my point is that if you talk about, uh, talk about the energy, safety, performance, reliability is also there, should be there. And someone was referring about the rice cooker. Let me tell you, we have a rice cooker safety standard, but we don't have a rice cooker performance standard. There are neighboring, our neighboring countries, they have the rice cooker standards. So it is high time, because rice cooker, the volume and the demand is growing. Every household, most of the houses, they are having the rice cookers. So we need to develop a standard, performance standard, and also an energy efficiency. Another product which, re, which re, I, I always think the electric kettle. Electric kettle, you have a standard, you have efficiency and all that. Just see the, the volume of the you know, kettle are used I mean, everywhere. Hospitality industry, the hotels, the small hotels, the budget hotels, every room they have a electric kettle. So if you ask me, I will say that I think rice cooker would be the most ideal item and also the electric kettle. But if somebody is talking about the infrared stove, hot plates, I think since we have moved towards induction, I think let us put that in the back seat. Let us not talk about those product, two products which are inefficient. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mukherjee, sir, for those remarks. Um, I realize now that you have answered all my questions in one go. But nonetheless, uh, uh, just a small follow-up question. So in the previous discussions, we uh, got a hint uh, about certain limitations. So the presentation by ESL mentioned that in the first, uh, first go, they have decided to go with like single zone uh, induction. Uh, I would also like to draw upon your thoughts as to what do you think should be the expansion uh, in terms of like multi-cooking zone devices, whether they should be brought under the larger purview of policy programs? Yeah, I think, thank you, Prashun, because this is, the, this is the one I always talk about. Um, if you see the standard, even globally also, uh, I remember that when B was conducting the study to develop this policy, um, then that time in 2019, we found that almost 4 million market is there, out of which 99% plus are all single cooking zone. Now what happened that, you know, all of us, I mean, I am 70 plus, I know, I have seen that chula used in the house, I was in a government house. If the government, CPWD, they were, you know, that's, you know this, uh, this uh, providing this chula, I mean, using the, you know, the wood, all the kagudan cakes. I have seen that. So that time, single chula was there. When the gas stops came, then we became greedy because in that case, we started getting one burner, two burners, three burners, now four burners. So already we are habituated with using the four burners, forget about four burners, at least two burners. Now imagine how I can accept a single cooking zone if I have having two you know, burners. So that is most convenient for me. My point is that, you know, you go to US, US, UK, I mean Europe, anywhere. I mean mostly they are using the built-in appliances. Built-in appliances means this is all, you know, put in a cupboard. I mean, and you use it. I mean, you cannot move it. So, cooking range is mostly, you know, mostly used there. Indian household, yes, our kitchen is are not, you know, ready to accept that because of our space concern around that. But more than single cooking zone, unless we develop, unless we manufacture. I think manufacturers, I mean, consumer will not be, you know, interested to buy that because he will not be satisfied just with the one cooking zone. Yeah. Uh, thank you, sir, for um, highlighting your views on the need to uh, include other um, multi-zone induction cook stoves. Uh, maybe now I would move to uh, Mr. Mishra from EESL. So, sir, uh, in the previous, uh, I mean, previous presentation, we already learned a lot about your plans to come up with a market transformation and um, aggregation program. 
but uh, I would like you to comment upon the overall journey. Uh, that is one. And when you try to uh, talk about your journey on the program development, I would also love to hear from, more from you about your plans to integrate uh, user experience or user pilots that you plan to do, as well as uh, the, mar uh, the response that you have gotten from markets or manufacturers till now, uh, how, they are, um, I mean, how they are willing to support the program. Uh, thank you. Uh, first of all, uh, I should congratulate class for back-to-back -back two days of full house discussion on two efficient and important appliances for the future. One was the fan on which we discussed on Friday and today the e-cooking. And with m your questions, most of the answers were actually addressed by my colleague Abhishek uh, with the, this thing. The main role of ESL I would explain in a holistic view is to launch and create a need for a product which has been there and which is required. Because basically uh, we do a demand aggregation model is there where we bring the cost to the affordability range. And the challenge here is uh, the, if you look at and my co-panelist can uh, also agree if uh, the affordability part is already answered in induction cooking. It's not uh, something which is expensive. Now, uh, coming back uh, to why it has been so long for an e-cooking to get adopted is basically uh, if we look at our LED intervention which we did, LED used to exist in India since 2009 and it was only six years in 2015 when B and ESL together intervened with various programs, first with DELP and then with uh, Ujala that uh, India lifestyle and lighting changed and it has taken so many steps which has been also recognized as a world record and is being studied in IIMs and Harvards. Now coming back to e-cooking, basically this technology also has been there. Earlier it was in, in the form of uh, the basic coil heater which was there since even before I was born and even ch chapati was uh, getting uh, inflated in that. Um, roti fulana bolte, but in English chapati getting inflated is the word. And uh, uh, so it has been there, but uh, looking at the pollution part of it, we say at the community level, we have reached to the need for this e-cooking to be there. Otherwise, if I say at the individual kitchen level, like the LED, light was always there, cooking is already happening and even clean cooking is happening because as per government and as per my understanding also, the gas-based LPG cooking is also a clean cooking. So it's happening. The main challenge and where ESL would be working and where our intervention with the lot of uh, study has come because we saw the operating cost of this as my colleague also has shared. Has, uh, has been tremendous on this because transportation of cylinders and even uh, we look at uh, when we are going to launch this in Ladakh and we call about the terrains in India, now we find good roads available now in India. So the transportation, road transportation which is generally used for LPG transfer is there. But uh, still there are a lot of areas in Northeast and North India where the transportation is a huge, huge cost to the government also. And being a subsidized product, the burden on the exchequer is very high. And there is where we need to fulfill the government's uh, requirement and keep pushing for the e-cooking uh, and electric cooking part. And the biggest gap which I see is like we have been discussing this thing again. I think I have been in more than 10, 12 forums for the last two years. We are still there where we started. So it's time and how can we basically put this acceleration and the pedal and the catalyst actually it would be I would say is now the right time because media is at its peak, media communication is at its peak and now it is the time that we need to tell people that it has to be used because not for today but for the future and I think there I'll stop and if you have. 
So, sir, you also talked about like uh, the discussion or the larger discourse still being at the same level where it was two years. But uh, could you reflect upon these last two years to identify those barriers or in other way around the support you need from others to make it happen? You, you know, uh, the, the good thing about barriers is the barriers are again, we have been talking and in fact, uh, ma'am from me also said it's all on the mindset. Mm -hmm. It's our mindset that we say that it is going to be that the people who are cooking are not aware. Everybody is aware today about electric cooking. It's basically what and where and how you can cook. We can market everything in the proportion because it has got all the quality of uh, being affordable, efficient, safe, healthy. Everything is there, but it's still not talked about. So basically the bar barrier I see is, has been the communication. We need to communicate and people as DG very clearly say, I also say it's right now is the, not the time that we talk to talk for it as a replacement but at a, a supplementary cooking medium so that people can adapt to it and then find the user usability much more friendly which it is actually is today for like everybody was sharing the experience when I am not at home and my wife is not at home we have this induction cook stove and my children are only instructed to cook on this because it's safe and efficient and that's a very big factor for me. But the main barrier uh, which I see is we are not communicating enough. There, would, there is no challenges uh, of, uh, say, availability also. There are a lot, of every nook and corner you talk today, if we talk about the rural population, I have been like, uh, sir was giving example of railway station. I have seen to so many hawkers nowadays using it in Punjab and Delhi and Noida they are using uh, induction cook stove and even some have been user, using the DC one with a battery backup in their uh, what you call uh, cart which they are using. So basically the barrier uh, would not be I think the supporting factor to us is the subsidy which is being provided to the government if it can be passed on uh, to the LPG if it can be shared to pass on a subsidy to this product and then we can basically make it like people are telling, telling distributed for free. I don't think free distribution is the way in India because people keep it in junkyard. So if you take a cost from them, they will surely use it. So subsidize it further so that it is even less than the, say, a parking cost in a five-star mall, which is 60, 70 rupees an hour. I think it can easily be bought to 200 rupees per month and this can be recovered within a period of one year. Second is we can ask uh, like in Ujala we had done a model of uh, EMI where the discom took the bulb from us on upfront basis and then they to recovered it from the consumer on their bill EMI. So 10 rupees per bill was added for seven months and recovery happened. So if a 1200 uh, what uh, 1200 rupees uh, induction is uh, put in an EMI of say even 50 to 100 rupees, mm -hmm. the recovery for discom will happen through bills in two to one to two years. I think uh, these are the things uh, for me in my understanding, there is not a lot of barriers that are there. Mm -hmm. It's mostly everything is addressed. We need to communicate it. Uh, thank you, sir, for um, sharing some of your learnings and uh, highlighting the need for awareness. And this is where I would like to tap on to Mr. Desai, uh, who has been working in this particular segment for more than two decades for now. Uh, and he has been championing the cause of awareness among consumers trying to demonstrate. Uh, sir, I would like to uh, tap on to your like, collective experience over the past two decades to identify some drivers that we must be aware of, uh, starting from awareness. Kitna minute do ke? Sir, we have clock <laughs> for you to see, but I would because expect uh, I would request you to be uh, judicious in time. I know. Pehle to ek minute le lunga. Nein, nein. <laughs> I will tell you why I am here. 
because this is mostly discussions about uh, domestic cooking. I am here because of Finovista. Since last two years, I have been associated with them and the way that they are promoting this cause in our country is tremendous. Vimal is working exceedingly well, let me tell you. And it is because of him that I have flew from Bangalore yesterday night and I am flying today back to my place, Surat. So last three days I was in Bangalore installing commercial inductions there where we are doing around eight kitchens. Now all these, each kitchen is going to cost them 40 lakhs. So you can imagine what would be the cost per head of one kitchen. And I will not go into mm -hmm. the depth of that subject. I will try to confine myself with my experiences. Char saal tak maine domestic kiya hai. Main fortunately physics ka graduate hoon. Isliye mujhe thoda bahut pata tha ki induction kya hai. And at the age of 65, I had gone to my physics teacher ki mujhe eddy current sikha do. मुझे सुनने के बाद वो बोलता है यार तुम तुम्हारा नॉलेज तो हमारे से ज्यादा है तो एनीवे दिस इज अ यूरोपियन टेक्नोलॉजी और जब पहले दो साल में हमें ऐसा पता चला कि इसमें दस परसेंट बारह परसेंट की सेविंग है कंपेयर टू गैस क्योंकि तभी तो गैस के रेट बहुत कम हुआ करते थे सो आई ड्रीम्ड ऑफ कमर्शियल इंडक्शन बिकॉज एक घर में छः सिलेंडर एवरेज किसी ने बताया तीन मैं छः पकड़ के चलता हूँ और एक होटल में कम से कम डेली छः से दस सो इट्स अ बिगर मार्केट और दूसरा जो मैडम मेरे से एग्री नहीं कर रही है वो कि भाई आप घर घर वी हैव गॉन टू वन थाउजेंड हाउसेस कुक्ड विथ अवर इंडक्शन और हम एग्जीबिशन में पार्ट लेते थे 200 सौ रुपया लेके बुकिंग करते थे वहाँ डेमो करते थे पानी में से भाप निकलती थी और हम पतेला उठा के दिखाते थे कि भाई पतेला गर्म नहीं है और पानी में से भाप निकल रही है सो पीपल यूज टू गिव अस टू हंड्रेड रुपीज हमने दाल सब्जी राइस रोटी एक स्वीट और फ्राइंग सब वहाँ किया है और एक सर्टिफिकेट साइन करवाया है कि मैं कल ये इंडक्शन पे कुकिंग करूँगी तभी बेचा है वरना हमने 200 रुपए वापस दिए हैं और हमारा बंदा चल दिया है सो फर्स्ट पार्ट इज दिस इज अ डेमो प्रोडक्ट आप इंडक्शन को छोड़ नहीं सकते सर ने जो बताया कि उसको अगर तीन महीने के बाद आप सर्विस ही नहीं करोगे हम ये कहते हैं कि मेरा इंडक्शन 10 साल चलना चाहिए रिपेयर होगा एक साल की वारंटी है लेकिन एक साल के बाद उसको रेगुलर रिपेयरिंग करना पड़ता है सो माई सेकेंड सजेशन टू द गवर्नमेंट इज अनलेस यू डोंट हैव रिपेयरिंग सेंटर्स डोंट प्रमोट द प्रोडक्ट अदरवाइज देर विल बी यू टर्न अगर रिपेयरिंग ही नहीं होगा तो बंदा बोलेगा ये टेक्नोलॉजी तो बेकार है ठीक है और तीसरा किसी ने मतलब आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू द डेप्थ ऑफ द सब्जेक्ट I am just confining myself to few points. Two kilowatt ka ek induction, ek cup chai, ek minute or 30 second me banata hai. Or aaj ka aapka ek burner, three minute or 30 second leta hai. To agar aapko utne hi time me chai banani hai, to aap ek kilowatt lo na. Do kyu le rahe ho? Or ek ek kilowatt ke do banao. You make a combo cook hob each of one kilowatt. So ये problem भी solve हो जाएगा कि अभी एक है. Our problem is जब ये induction market में आना शुरू हुआ, तो जो components import किए गए और जो buddy में assemble किए गए और जो बड़ी कंपनियां उसमें आई, वो किसी ने ये नहीं सोचा कि हम अगर बंगाल में है तो बंगाली, गुजरात में गुजराती साउथ में है साउथ इंडियन एक छोटा सा डीवीडी 
या सीडी बना के क्यों नहीं साथ में दे दें सो दैट वेर एवर यू कांट रीच द डेमो विल डू द ट्रिक और वो इंडक्शन चलेगा तो एक एक किलोवाट के दो हॉब दैट इज वन सजेशन उतने ही टाइम में कुकिंग हो जाएगा और किलोवाट पावर तो दो ही होगा फाइन सो इन नट शेल आई थिंक आई विल नॉट बी एबल टू कवर ऑल द पॉइंट and no, sir but we understand that yeah. you are advocating for uh, uh, consumer centric choices to be made available also an ecosystem that needs to be developed uh, sir i uh, i came to know that you also happen to have worked on solar based induction uh, that too for uh, large institutional kitchens but i would uh, request you to quickly comment on your experiences and the way forward for this technology segment nahi usme aisa hai we have not directly gone into डीसी हमारे जो इंडक्शन लगे हुए थे तीन महीने बाद पता चला कि 70 किलोवाट के हमारे इंडक्शन जो एक फ्राइंग हाउस यूज कर रहा था टोटली अबाउट सिक्स ऑफ देम बिग कड़ाइस वो बोले हम तो सोलर पे चला रहे हैं तो हमने बोला कैसे चला रहे हो बोले कुछ नहीं हमारा पावर तो ग्रिड को जाता है तो आई हैव नॉट गॉन इन टू मच डेप्थ यस बट आई हैव ट्राइड टू स्टडी तो दिल्ली में ही जुगाड़ किया है लोगों ने आई थिंक यू मस्ट बी अवेयर ऑफ देम तो आई हैव सीन ऑन यूट्यूब ये है करेक्ट सो यस सी सोलर इंडक्शन भी अगर बनाते हैं तो मैं तो यही कहूंगा कि एक एक किलोवाट के बनाओ मैं तो डोमेस्टिक कभी करने वाला नहीं हूं क्यों <laughs> मैं गाइड करूंगा आई हैव बीन टेलिंग पीपल मेरे पास तो बहुत कुछ है आप आके ले जाओ मैं तो फ्री में दूंगा I mean, those people who are NGOs or unko kuch karna hai, mm -hmm. so we no, can support them. So, sir, your thoughts are well taken. Uh, I mean, what you are suggesting is uh, for the transformation to happen, we need to take target commercial segment first, and that can be a stepping stone for the larger transition. That's an excellent approach. Ek commercial establishment. Ham jab corporate kitchens banate hain. तो तीन हजार मील्स बनते हैं एक सेशन में दो सेशन में छ हजार प्लस स्नैक्स कितना गैस का यूज होता होगा इट इज इन थ्री लैक्स फाइव लैक्स सेवन लैक्स एंड जस्ट आई विल एड टू दिस देर इज अ होटल बाय द नेम ऑफ ग्रैंड मर्क्यूरे इन बड़ोड़ा ओल्ड इट वाज सूर्या पैलेस सिंस लास्ट थ्री इयर्स ग्रैंड मर्क्यूरे इज रनिंग दे वॉन्ट टू कन्वर्ट ऑल देयर किचन इन इंडक्शन सो दे सेड how can you support us i said what do you want so i made one 15 kilowatt induction for them gave them for a month and i suggested them parameters ki aap ek kaam karo bade se bada burner yahan rakh do jitna aap cooking gas pe karte ho same quantity aap induction pe karo aur kya taste karo time yeah. color texture cost of gas and the cost of electricity i have been given the feedback that they are getting 62% savings against gas aap commercial rate pakad ke chalo to bhi it is too high yes sir thank you sir for sharing your experiences uh, now maybe i'll move on to um, anjana ma'am um, anjana ma'am uh, dharma life has been working with grassroots communities to enable delivery of various solutions which are essential in nature and you have been trying to do in a commercial way uh, i would like to ask you about the electric cooking or clean cooking devices so when we discuss this proposition at a nation level we talk about energy savings emission reduction but what is your marketing pitch or usp when you try to sell these to grassroots consumers who might who might not be aware about these benefits but how it can add values to their lives thank you prasun uh, so uh, uh, with sir anil propagating commercial usage of we we promoted it to households in rural india and uh, i would concur with uh, shruti ma'am from last session when she talked about women in the value chain so we've got women entrepreneurs who promote these products to rural households and till date we've sold 40000 induction cooktops in rural india 
through MFI and our entrepreneur channel. 60% of that comes from the entrepreneur channel. So the adoption has been uh, immense. And yes, our women entrepreneurs have been a, a, a key, a key, have played a key role in that adoption. Uh, I think some of the innovative marketing campaigns that we have also run is, I would like to mention this one activ activation called Dharma Chef, where we do a local cooking competition with local village women uh, at the village with local KOLs and the villagers on induction cooktops. So they cook local dishes, dishes that they cook every day on the induction cooktop in front of the gathered audience. So you get a practical demonstration, you get, uh, you know, KLs to endorse the taste of the food. You see smokeless cooking. So all the benefits that you want to talk about is actually demonstrated in that one activations. Following that are entrepreneurs and visits, the households, they do practical demonstrations one-on-one, -on -one, and this has really helped us in reaching out to more households and increasing adoption. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Angela, ma'am. Uh, it was good to learn from you that consumer finance linkages can enable people who really need it uh, to go for it. And ho I hope a similar model can also be adopted for urban segment, because uh, um, while preparing for this segment, I realized that one of the biggest consumer segment which is going for induction cooking is likely around students or immigrants who don't want to go into bureaucratic set uh, part to get an LPG connection. Uh, moving on to uh, the big elephant in the room, uh, and that is around the larger finance. Uh, Mr. Samrat, uh, we heard uh, a lot in the news and media about EKI's plan to enter into this segment and maybe link it with carbon markets to make it more affordable and more accessible. Uh, I would like uh, you to talk a bit around your plans going forward and uh, uh, maybe the challenges that you see in the whole journey. EKI uh, is in clean cooking initiative for almost last three years. We have our own manufacturing and distribution completely supported by carbon finance. That is in clean cooking where we have uh, distributed or manufactured clean biomass cook stoves which are much more efficient than the normal three stone practice in the remotest rural. But uh, the present carbon, because our basic purpose EKI is a carbon market player so uh, that's our USP now considering the present uh, energy transition which is primarily depend on last mile uh, connectivity on electricity um, and the possible technology solutions which are available that has a uh, positive feedback on particularly monitoring, reporting, and verification of the usage of the device, which primarily determines the um, higher valuation of the carbon credit as a commodity in the global market, uh, for particularly electric cooking, e-cooking, or induction cooking, whatever you might like to say, that facilities is pushing us to shift our business completely from uh, energy efficiency improvement uh, cook stoves to a complete transformation to uh, e-cooking and that's to based on renewable energy technology addressing the access issue as well as the climate change energy um, uh, the emission reduction issues mainly targeting the rural remotest people who are still the data is all been discussed is still depend on the biomass cooking that has beside that and it has lot of other sdg benefit which uh, mr abhishek has already talked about and some of it is been experienced by the users the people the rural community particularly the women folks due to their dead carry in 
collecting of firewoods. It is not always the Lakshadip kind of a situation where the firewoods is available just outside your uh, boundary. It's particularly if you visit the areas which are semi-arid, dried area, this is a huge dirt gary. This has also has a, uh, the local uh, the health impact and the cost to the country, both taken into consideration. I think uh, from a carbon finance perspective, the urban sector is not so attractive for us because the baseline become LPG and the difference or credit generation or due to the efficiency improvement part uh, is not that much, whereas when we addressing a leaf frog from biomass to e-cooking, it supports a lot and substantial part can be uh, supported through carbon finance, uh, removing a lot of barrier on the upfront cost side. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, sir, uh, just a follow-on question uh, while preparing for this session. I also happen to read about the MRV and certain ambiguity around it. Uh, given that you uh, now I know that you have been working for past three years on this, what, what are the changes that you see uh, with regards to MRV that enables you to maybe deliver to the consumers in a better way? Uh, our conventional businesses, which was... Uh, the improved cook stove, improved biomax cook stove, it is very difficult, maybe technically possible, but techno commercially very difficult to do a real time monitoring of the usage of that cook stove, which is far more easy for a solar induction cook stove or an induction cook stove with present day technology. And that real-time monitoring give a assurance to the market, particularly the carbon procurer, the carbon uh, offset procurer, the definite uh, uh, so-called risk-free product as a carbon offset, which has actually been generated. There is no question mark on that, which is presently uh, the discourse in the international carbon market also and which is defining the price of the credit that is being generated. So the good part of e-cooking that the technology is such a uh, good that you can have a real-time monitoring of that. Uh, thank you, sir. I would have loved to probe you more on that, but unfortunately we don't have much time. But nonetheless, uh, good to know that uh, a digital MRV, real-time embedded MRV can definitely help us improve the quality of credits that uh, we probably are going to generate. Uh, with that, I would now um, like to uh, uh, open the floor for questions from audience. Uh, and uh, uh, my apologies in advance, we are a bit short on time, so uh, we have to be very selective with questions. Yeah, small question. Uh, but uh, Mr. Just, Vadva already uh, has the mic. Just to Mr. <laughs> Anil Desai and Mr. Animesh Mishra. A couple of months, I had been in Dubai for two weeks you now. We stayed uh, for four to five days in du uh, Dubai and another five days in uh, Abu Dhabi. And we saw, you know, remarkable change in the living conditions, you know. Everything was electric, you know. Even though gas stoves were also there, we were surprised to find, you know, the gas stoves were not lighting, you know. Then we called the supervisor. Uh, and uh, mind it, it was uh, very in the vicinity of the Burj Khalifa as well as the Dubai Mall. So we called the supervisor with, we, because a small kid was also there, my grandson. So we wanted to make some cereals for him. So we told her why it is not lighting, the gas is not lighting because the gas is very cheap, just like at a dearth, you know, uh, low price. Then he said, no, no, it is discontinued. That building was 65 story existing uh, apartments and he told, no, no, they have, we are discontinued and uh, in uh, entire Dubai it is gradually being discontinued. The gas is no more being used in the Dubai. You know. And they started, uh, they told, there is a uh, industrial cook hops, there are four or five this uh, cooktops are there, so you can use that one, you know. So you can see, even though they, are, they, they have a plenty of gas as well as the oil, but in Dubai, they are not using this thing. You know. And same happened in the Dubai. Uh, no, he is suggesting that the usage is there. I totally agree with you. And uh, 
Uh, there are many countries now in the world which is completely electric uh, because my brother is in the Philippines. I know that, it, that in Philippines you don't, uh, you don't get gas-based stoves. You cannot use it. Uh, you have to take special government permission for that. And secondly, coming to in India itself, uh, we don't need to go to Dubai also, sir. Uh, I have just been to Vijaywada, a place there. All the open five-star kitchens nowadays are using induction. So it's there. Like sir has been saying, industrial and institutional cooking in India mostly now is being done on induction. Those of you who are interested to go into the depth of the subject can go on Google and just try to find out induction cooking in Ecuador. There's a country, Ecuador. Since last 2014, they had started the switch over. So you will find all very interesting articles, how they are promoting inductions and how they are installing inductions. To the extent that China has now made factories there in Ecuador of making inductions. Uh, I think we have uh, scope for just one more question. So maybe I would request Mike to be handed over. Uh, Ma'am over there. Yeah, good afternoon. I am Dr. Minu Mishra representing DISCOM BACS Yamuna Bhava Limited. Uh, after this such a useful deliberation since morning, I have two concerns. One is that about that with uh, uh, Mr. Sunil, that you have talked about the affordability and the tariff part. So the tariff part basically, especially in Delhi, when the start, consumers start uh, using this uh, cook stove, no, their subsidy slab will get changed. So this is one of the major challenges. Uh, we have to really look into that because you are talking about India as a whole, but these are the big challenges also. And one more challenge is that the discom interest has to be taken care because if you are talking about the cooking, then the cooking load will come in the morning 6 to 7 or, or 7 to 8 in the evening. So whether the discoms are prepared for that because we got peak load also, so that management of these, so discom interest or discom has to be taken into consideration. So I think uh, since morning, you must have taken, you're all experts, you must have taken the interest of DISCOM also. But uh, when you're talking about the potential and all those things, so those things has to be taken care. So these are my submissions. Thank you. Yeah, just one thing, uh, which is why I mentioned that we should look at induction cook stuff in a phased manner, right? I mean, because, because of this very concern that you raised. So yeah, that's it, I think. Uh, Sir, uh, I know there are like uh, uh, multiple questions, but we are, we are really short on time. But I think the lunch can give us a good opportunity to continue this discussion further. So uh, with this, um, I think uh, we have reached the end of our discussion, the second panel discussion. Uh, I would like to thank our panelists uh, for taking out time and sharing their uh, invaluable insights on the subject matter. Uh, your, uh, your contributions are duly uh, appreciated. I would also like to thank uh, our uh, audience for their engagement and participation. Without this, uh, this would not have been a lively discussion. Uh, and um, lastly, I want to add is like, let's continue this discussion beyond this venue, uh, starting with lunch, but in the due course of future as well. So let's hope we continue this discussion in, uh, to the due weightage. Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing your experiences with all of us today. And as we say that we have to take these learnings further and uh, benefit from them as uh, an entire community together. Ladies and gentlemen, before we break for lunch, uh, we have mementos, uh, tokens of appreciation for each of our panelists on the dais. And also we have a video. So I please request everyone to kindly remain seated. Agle panch minute, please hame de dije. And then together we go for lunch. So. May I once again, uh, may I please uh, once again request? request the moderator to kindly please present mementos to each of our dignitaries on the dais, beginning with Mr. Animesh Mishra. Zordar Taliyon ke saath dhanabad. Mr. P.K. Mukherjee.
Thank you, sir, for adding value to this discussion and sharing your experiences with us. Ms. Anjana, thank you for sharing your thoughts with us today. Mr. Anil Desai. Mr. Anil Desai. Thank you for joining us here. Mr. Samrat Sen Gupta. Mr. Samrat Sen Gupta. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us on this panel. And Mr. Sunil Mani. Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the close uh, of this day, this conference. But before we actually break for lunch, we have an excitement, uh, exciting announcement to make. CLASP, in collaboration with BEE, has developed an insightful video that sheds light on the success of BEE standards and labeling program. This video will be launched right here, right now, exclusively for all of you who are present here. So let's don't take any more time and please requesting everyone to kindly please direct your attention towards the screens as we witness the unveiling of this wonderful video which is titled Kahani Sitaron Ki. Sabhi se nevidhan hai ki sabhi ki drishti screen ki taraf ho. A group picture hum lenge is samay aur uske baad ye video jo hai Kahani Sitaron Ki. Wo yahaan par launch hum karne ja rahe hai. To sab se nevidhan hai ki please aap sab ki nigahi screen ki taraf rahe aur uske baad finally We'll break for lunch, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, panelists. Thank you, speakers, for your wonderful insights on the subject. Ladies and gentlemen, kindly please take a look at the screens now. I request our team to please play the video. Asman ke sitare chhone ho, to bada sochna padega. ऐसी ही सितारों से जुड़ी हुई कहानी है मेरी सिर्फ मेरी नहीं पूरे देश की कहानी और ये शुरू होती है कुछ ठंडे पानी से पापा पापा क्या हुआ तेरी छुट्टी है ना चल आज हर हालत में नया गीजर ले ही आएंगे ओके तो इस तरह शुरू हुई नए गीजर खरीदने और इसी बहाने स्टार लेबल्स के बारे में जानने की हमारी कोशिश वैसे क्या आपको पता है भारत सरकार की ऊर्जा दक्षता ब्यूरो यानी कि ब्यूरो ऑफ एनर्जी एफिशिएंसी बीई ने अब तक 34 उपकरणों में ऊर्जा दक्षता के स्टार लेबल्स लगाने की नीति अपना ली है और आने वाले दिनों में अन्य कई उपकरणों के लिए भी इस प्रकार के स्टार लेबल अपनाने का लक्ष्य बीई ने ले लिया है नहीं पता ना जब पापा और मैं गीजर खरीदने गए उस समय हमें भी इन स्टार लेबल्स के बारे में कुछ नहीं पता था भाई कोई बढ़िया सा गीजर दिखाना बिल्कुल सर कितने स्टार वाला चाहिए स्टार <laughs> भाई हम गीजर देख रहे हैं होटल का कमरा नहीं अरे ये स्टार वाल का चक्कर छोड़ो जो भी पानी अच्छे से गर्म करे और जेब पर भी भारी ना पड़े वो दे दो सर इसके लिए तो आपको स्टार के चक्कर में पढ़ना ही पड़ेगा देखिए सर यहाँ इतने सारे गीजर हैं। अब आपको कैसे पता चलेगा कि कौन सा गीजर कम बिजली खाएगा इसलिए भारत सरकार की ओर से बीई यानी ब्यूरो ऑफ एनर्जी एफिशियंसी ने एक सिस्टम बनाया जिससे पता चले कि अलग अलग प्रोडक्ट्स के विभिन्न मॉडल्स कितनी एफिशिएंट तरीके से बिजली का इस्तेमाल करते हैं और कौन से मॉडल से आपकी ज़्यादा बचत हो सकती है जैसे एसी के अलग अलग मॉडल्स हैं फ्रिज है या एलईडी बल्ब है लेकिन ये सिस्टम समझना भी तो मुश्किल काम होगा मुश्किल बिल्कुल भी नहीं है ज्यादा स्टार यानी ज्यादा एफिशियंसी और ज्यादा बचत स्टार रेटिंग जानने से बचत का आइडिया पापा को बढ़िया लगा और वे हमारे लिए खरीद कर ला पाए एक नया गीजर स्टार रेटिंग के साथ और अब थोड़े बड़े पैमाने पर बचत की बात करें बीई की स्टार लेबलिंग योजना के कारण पूरे भारत में कुल मिलाकर सैतीस हजार करोड़ रुपए की सालाना बचत हुई है साथ ही कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड एमिशन में पाँच करोड़ मेट्रिक टन की घटौती भी हुई है 
है ना बड़ी बात इसलिए अगर हम देश भर में स्टार लेबलिंग योजना की जागरूकता बढ़ा सके तो हर तरीके से हमारा फायदा ही फायदा है और भारत को अपने जलवायु परिवर्तन के लक्ष्य तक पहुंचने में भी इस योजना से बहुत मदद मिलेगी इसलिए चलिए देश के साथ हम भी आगे बढ़े स्टार लेबल के ही उपकरण अपनाए आसमान के सितारे छू ले और इस पूरी धरती के प्रति अपनी जिम्मेदारी निभाने में अपना हाथ बटाए धरती के प्रति जिम्मेदारी निभाने में अपना हाथ बटाए वो लवली स्टेटमेंट इट वॉज होप वी कैन यू नो डू जस्टिस टू इट एंड थोड़ा हम भी प्रयास करें ताकि ये जो लक्ष्य हैं ये जो हमारी uh, जो हम पाना चाहते हैं वो हम एक्चुअली में कर पाएँ बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर ज्वाइनिंग अस हेयर टुडे लेडीज एंड जेंटमैन वी आर फाइनली कंक्लूडिंग एंड काइंडली प्लीज प्रोसीड फॉर लंच थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर ज्वाइनिंग अस हेयर थैंक यू वेरी मच